Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome inside LeBat Memorial Park for another Friday night action here as the London Majors get set to play host to the Guelph Royals. Noah Smith joining alongside me, Dylan Baker, as we get set to go. Dylan, and another exciting night of baseball action here for the London Majors, looking to end their four-game skid. Game skid, and last weekend was a bit of a disappointing weekend for the Majors. They went 0-3, and one of those losses came against this Guelph team. The Majors are 1-1 one one this season against Guelph. Their second win of the season came against Guelph two weeks ago right here in London, but they lost last week. They'll look to rekindle that winning magic here tonight. And it wasn't an overly bad game for the Majors on the road in Guelph, but it's been the Majors' road suffering that has been really their biggest problem so far, yet to get a win on the road. But we are here on Friday night, home game. Already have a home win against the uh, Guelph Royals this year, so looking to get back into the win column tonight. Yeah, for sure. And you know what? No better place to do it than at home, in front of your home fans. And like you mentioned, Noah, they've been struggling a little bit on the road, so they will look to continue the winning at home here tonight. They certainly will, and the Majors, as mentioned, uh, another busy weekend for them. Three games in three days, much like they did last weekend. They're here home tonight against Guelph before they head for a rare Saturday night action ball game in Barrie. That's a 7 o'clock start at Coach Stadium in Barrie tomorrow night. We'll have the coverage of that. And then they go to Toronto on Sunday afternoon. So three games in three days. Just a reminder, we will not be broadcasting the Sunday edition game in Toronto due to press box capabilities, but we will be live feeding you tweets and updates throughout the game for that one but another busy weekend and the majors you'd like to try and take two or three this weekend if you can yeah and last week they were unfortunately unable to do that against kitchener guelph and toronto but this weekend you got a you got a good chance of doing it again you've got a good team or a team with lots of momentum coming into the game in guelph they did play last night and they got uh, touched up a little bit by welland but they will look to turn things around tonight and with a good team against a good team like barry tomorrow they'll look to get uh this weekend off to the right foot here and seeing for the London Majors, we uh, we get a really a look at the lineup that was kind of the same as the last game for them as you take a look at the starting lineups now. But a different name kind of in the middle of that order. We'll get to him. Here's the starting lineups, though. Yeah, so leading off at shortstop, Phil Therapis, Carlos Artiega. I want to take a look at him a little bit. Artiega uh, made his 2019 debut on Saturday and drove in two runs on Sunday going through for four. He's a fast guy who can play second, short, and third. Izzy Pena is batting third in left field. Cleveland Brownlee is DHing, batting fourth. Byron Reichstein batting fifth in right field. And Chris Chambers is batting sixth at first base. Chambers was a major from 2009 to 2012, and he had 70, or sorry, he had, he had 16 home runs with 71 RBI in 110 games as a major. He will look to continue his success here this season. Mike Ambrose catching, batting seventh. Steve Froze at third base, batting eighth. And Jonathan DeForest rounding things up in center field, batting ninth. Juliandre Higuera on the mound for the Majors. So we get to see the Majors line up there as they get set to come back here and try to get a win on Friday night, Dylan. And we've talked about Cleveland Brownlee off to a little bit of a slow start, but the bat really came alive last weekend for him. Yeah, we certainly did see it come alive in Guelph and in Kitchener as he hit his first two home runs this season, and both were absolutely destroyed. So hopefully Cleveland is off his little schneid to begin the year, and he's back to the same guy we've seen for the past several seasons. And the bats overall seem to be all right at times. You know, we're hitting the ball well and everything. It's just the bad inning here and there that has been the biggest problem for the majors so far this year. Yeah, and uh, the bats have been pretty good so far this season. But the one bad inning tends to be a really bad inning so far, or it has been at least uh, in the beginning of the year. So if you can limit that bad inning and get on the board early, which is also something the majors haven't done, the offense has been good, but it's rolled around later on in the ball game. It's important to score early in the game to get you off to the right foot get your pitch some confidence uh, to start the ball game. So if they can score early and if they can limit the bad innings, they'll have success here tonight. It's a gorgeous night for baseball at Labatt Park. Of course, we had the, the rainy spring that gave us a slow start to the season, but absolutely beautiful weather, 20 degrees, sunshine out there right now. So the majors looking to put on a show for the hometown fans here and get back into the wind column. It's going to be an exciting night for baseball. Oh yeah, for sure. It's a beautiful night here at Labatt Park. Fans have come out and they are ready to watch their majors take on Guelph and it should be a great game between two uh, good teams here tonight. Uh, very good baseball coming tonight as well. As we'll, we'll actually go ahead and take a look at the standings, Dylan, right now. Uh, Barry, of course, that top Kitchener, no surprise there, but you want to talk a little bit about Welland in that three spot. Yeah, Welland's been a uh, pleasant surprise for their fans and throughout the IBL, really. They're they're uh, third in the standings at five and three. For a team with a bunch of new guys that have to gel together, they've done really well, and we know how, how important uh, team chemistry is for a team. So Welland being five and three is a good thing to see. 
It certainly is. They're off to a great start, five and three. Hamilton at three and three as well up there in the four spot. And then the Guelph Royals that we see tonight at five and five so far through their first ten games, Toronto four six. And then London and Brantford off the slow starts at the bottom of the standings there. Overall, though, the majors, they'd like to try and bounce back here tonight, get back into the win column and start things off and have a good weekend here. Yeah, it's important that they do get things off to the right foot here tonight as they face a team that they can beat in Guelph. They've done it once before, and with a tough team like Barry tomorrow, they've got to get off to the right foot and got to get a win here tonight. We take a look here at the out-of-town scoreboard for tonight. Toronto is in Hamilton. That game just about getting underway as well. And then later on, the Panthers in Brantford, 8 o'clock start in the MLB. Arizona visiting Toronto. That game's already underway. Minnesota and Detroit already underway. And, of course, Dylan... We would be a little bit remiss if we didn't mention the Raptors in action as well, 9 o'clock at Golden State. Yeah, for sure. The Raptors do take on the Warriors tonight. Game four. Clay Thompson is back in the lineup. Kevin Durant still not in the lineup. We saw a bit of a scuffle between Kyle Lowry and uh, Warriors part owner in game three. He has actually been banned for a year from attending NBA games. The Raptors will look to continue their successes on the road here tonight in uh, Golden or in Golden State at Oracle. It's always a tough place to play if you're the visiting team, and they'll look to get a win tonight. So we'll keep you updated on that game as it comes along as well. And we're just introducing the lineups here at Labatt as we get set to go. Dylan, one of the things so far for the majors, uh, the pitching, we wanted to talk about that a little bit as well because there's been a lot of bright spots in the pitching as well. It's one thing that manager Rup Chanerdat talked about coming into the season. He liked the pitching. He liked the bullpen. I don't think it's been as good as he's wanted it to be so far. But it, there's lots of bright spots going on so far early on. Yeah, and even the pitchers that have struggled a little bit, they've they've shown good signs. I mean, Julian Higuera has been one of the better starters for the majors so far this season. He is fourth in the league in strikeouts. He is a great strikeout pitcher with a good fastball, wipeout breaking stuff. And John Fitzsimmons closing things out in the back end of the bullpen is always a safe option. So the majors, of course, we talked about Chris Chambers back in the lineup for them after playing for three seasons back from 2009 to 2012. So. Uh, for a long time majors fans familiar face for them to see him kind of get back into the lineup here in a majors uniform of course the import player coming out of america so uh it, we'll get to see him and he had a good bat when he played for the majors so interesting to see if he can pick that back up again here yeah and it'll be, it'll be interesting to see what uh what he brings to this majors lineup as he was very good in three seasons hitting 16 home runs driving in 71 runs in those three seasons so he adds a dynamic bat to this order and it'll be fun to watch tonight and the starting pitcher on the mound for the Guelph Royals, we actually saw him earlier on in the season as well, Dylan. So the majors familiar with him on the bump. Yeah, going for the Guelph Royals tonight is Yomar Concepcion. He pitched against the majors on June 1st in Guelph last Saturday. And he uh, pitched six innings, allowing three runs on four hits. Or actually allowed four runs. Three of them were earned on four hits. So the majors know what to expect from Yomar. And uh, we actually saw Izzy Pena hit a home run against Concepcion in the last one. So he'll look to continue that and maybe uh, hit another one here tonight. Pena back in the lineup as well. Uh, touch on him a little bit because... I'll I wouldn't say a pleasant surprise. We knew he had a good bat coming into this season, but hitting for a high average so far with the majors this season and hitting for power as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. And uh, he's he's batting 361 right now for the majors, and he brings versatility in the outfield. He can play first, he can play left, he can play right. And with the bat, this guy is something else. He's batting 361 as mentioned. He's got three home runs. He's got plenty of RBIs. He's come up clutch in, uh, in, in late in games. So he's been a real bright spot for this majors offense. And what he can bring to this team is pretty great. So we'll look to see his bat come alive tonight. Of course, that home run against Concepcion in Guelph just about a week ago. They're introducing the lineups right now. As you hear in-house announcer Eric Collins announcing the return of Chris Chambers to the lineup tonight. We'll keep an eye on that one as it moves along, Dylan. Ambrose back behind the dish. We saw him start the season out playing third base as well, a little bit of first base. Now back behind the dish, and he's comfortable back there. Oh, yeah, and uh, Mike Ambrose's primary position is behind the plate, and he's always been great back there. He knows his pitching staff, a very good catcher, does a great job blocking balls. And uh, he, him and Julio Andre Aguera seem to really click when they're out there together. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does here tonight. We'll keep an eye on that as we get going. We're just about ready to have the national anthems here as Higuera heads out to the mound. And we will send it down to field level now for the anthems.
this evening. Please welcome the nine-year-old Adam Clayhan. Beautiful rendition of O Canada there, and we are just about set to get underway. Higuera on the mound to get things started for the majors. Ambrose behind the dish. Going to be an exciting night of baseball here at Labatt Park as the Guelph Royals and the London Majors get set to do battle. And Leandro Higuera on the mound for the majors. He's always been a good starter. He's been great for the majors so far in his short career in the IBL. He'll hopefully continue that here tonight. So we get set to bat here, and the Guelph Royals would get set to try and start things in the top half of the first inning. Hagira starting again here for the majors. Dylan, he's looked really good so far in his starts and that is one thing that Rube Chanerdad has liked the most about Higuera is that he's looked confident on the mound which is a, a little bit strange not too strange but strange sometimes to see someone coming over playing in a new country but being so comfortable in his first few games. Yeah you know what it's really really good to see Julian Andre Higuera is never panicking out there on the mound such a calm presence and he, we've seen him show emotion when he gets a big out or a big double play he tends to give us a little fist bump or something he is uh he plays with a lot of passion but he does not get phased by a bad play on defense to lead things off for the royals when he steps into the box will be kyle kush 556 batting average but that is only in nine at bats so don't let the average fool you too much although he is off to a pretty good start for his season three hits or pardon me five hits in nine at bats so he has been hitting the ball well. We did see him last Saturday when we were on the road in Guelph at for the Royals. So hopefully he can get the Royals started if you're a Royals fan. So the throwdown from Ambrose, we are set to get underway here. Just a little bit behind start time, of course, 7.41 now. <laughs> baseball is baseball, and we're happy that we can get some in. Kyle Cush at the plate. Stands in there on the left-handed batter's box, gets set, and we are just about ready to get underway. First pitch from Higuera. Low for ball one. As Eric Collins lets us know, 7 to 41 the first pitch here on Friday evening. Ball 
Second pitch from Higuera across for a strike on the outer part of the zone. We'll move the count to one and one now. Here's the one one delivery. That one catches the zone as well. One and two now for Higuera. And that's one of the things we were talking about in the pregame. Julian-Andre Aguirre does not seem faced by anything through a first pitch ball in the dirt, but came back with two strikes, painting the corner. Kush, five hits, one RBI, nine at bat so far this season. Here's the one, two. Just outside. And we'll move to two, two. Now evens up the count. That pitch seemed to be around the same spot as the last two, but maybe an off-speed pitch. Kush did a good job of laying off. 2-2 from Higuera. Called strike three. Strikes him out to start the ball game. So one strike out already for Higuera and looking good on the mound. Yeah, for sure. And Julian Higuera racks up the strikeouts. The best strikeout pitcher on the uh, on the team. And uh, one of the better ones in the IBL, too. Is the, is the, it looks like the mound is a little wet, so Higuera needs something to scrape off the cleats. But uh, Higuera has always been great, and he's, he's, he's racked up swinging strikeouts, but also called strikeouts as he really knows how to work the strike zone. Now into bat for the Guelph Royals, Dave Mendham. Get to see him take some at-bats. He is wearing the number 44, usually reserved for the slugger on the Guelph Royals, Angel Villalona. Mendham 375 and 8 at-bats, first pitch, cross for a strike, 0-1. Leandro Higuera is not afraid to go anywhere in the strike zone. That pitch was inside on the inside corner, hit it nicely. So he pitches with a lot of confidence out there on the mound and is a great, great starting pitcher for London. Mendham appeared in 36 games last year for the Brantford Red Sox, hitting 309. Mendham a good hitter for average. Uh, he can get on base, too. Good uh, good bat to have in front of big guys like Sean Riley and Angel Villalona. Did have three home runs and 17 RBIs last year as well for the Red Sox. But he's down 0-2 here on Higuera, who is a strikeout machine. Here's the 0-2 pitch. Goes inside in the dirt. 1-2 and two now. Not a bad waste pitch there. It's never a fun thing to be down 0-2 against Higuera, the way he can put you away. And on 0-2, Higuera won't go anywhere near the zone waste, so we'll see what it goes to on 1-2 here. That one hit on the ground to short. Traps going to have to make a strong throw across the diamond, but it's not in time. Mendham beats it out for a lead uh, or a one out base runner now for the Guelph Royals. Yeah, and that ball was hit slowly. Thrap has waited on him possibly a little bit too long. He had to make a very good throw to first, and he did. Unfortunately, it wasn't in time. Chris Chambers with a nice stretch over there at first could not get the out, unfortunately, for the majors. So Julian Trigger has to work with the base runner on, but that hasn't seemed to uh, face him so far. And now the perennial slugger will step up to the plate here for Guelph. Sean Riley, the designated hitter in today's ball game. 29 at-bats. Batting 414 so far this season. Riley's such a good hitter for average and, of course, for power. So, uh, Higuera has a tough task at hand trying to get him out. Already four long balls on the season for him. First pitch from Higuera up and in. Count moved to 1 and 0. Riley been around the IBL since the summer of 2010. That one across for a strike here last season as well, playing with the Guelph Royals. Batting 342, count on 12 long balls, so he knows how to hit. He certainly does. Sean Riley's such a good hitter. Destroying the ball this season. The 1-1 one -one to him. That one called a strike as well, so the count will move to 1-2 here. Higuera in control of the at-bat. It's uh, great to see that Higuera is not afraid to work up with his pitches in the zone because Sean Riley is a great home run hitter, but uh, Juliandre has shown no fear in throwing the pitch, throwing pitches at the top of the zone. See what they go to on 1-2. Here's the delivery. That one hit on the ground, but hard foul. 
down the first baseline. Keep the count at one and two. Interesting to see what Higuera goes with on one and two. Does he go with a fastball maybe up, maybe low and away, or does he go with an off speed here? He came with him with the hard stuff a few times already. Up in the zone, here's the one, two. Off speed, fouled off. Down the first baseline. Once again, we'll have to redo that one, two. So an absolute rocket there off the off speed on one, two. Interesting to see what Higuera comes back with here. Ambrose as well, an IBL veteran, has faced Riley numerous times, so he knows what to go to. Here's the one, two, inside and high, two and two now. Again, even though that pitch did miss, Higuera and Ambrose showing no fear and going up in the zone with pitches, and that's super good to see with a uh, with power bat at the plate like Sean Riley. Showing that they're not afraid to go right at. Now the 2-2. Two -two. Swung on and missed. The strikeout of Sean Riley. And Higuera's got punch outs for his first two outs of the first inning. Well, Leandre Higuera racks up strikeouts. Great off-speed stuff. And we saw it right there. Sean Riley was fooled by what looked like it might have been a change-up. And uh, great to see from Juliandre Higuera because... When his off-speed stuff is working, he can dominate. Higuera this season, we mentioned the 19 innings pitch, 22 strikeouts in those 19 innings. And now we'll get to see a, another big bat here for Guelph. So you're worked through one, but you're not done. No, you most certainly are not. In, and Helvi Alona, the uh, first baseman in the game for Guelph, is batting 400 to start the year, and he hits a lot of bombs. Fouled off to start the at-bat, 0-1 count. Fialona, 400 average and 40 at-bats this season, so he's off to a hot start. Has just the one home run, but that came Saturday afternoon in Guelph against the Majors. Yes, yeah, so you got to be careful working uh, working against Angel Fialona. And an interesting thing to look at here for Higuera, the first two outs he got on uh, the two strikeouts, he did not have a first pitch strike. What Higuera will do is he'll work back in the counts very nicely, and he did that against Kyle Cush and Sean Riley, getting strikeouts against both. 0-1 oh, pitch set. Here's the delivery. That one fouled off by Villalona. They had to play, and now Higuera in control once again on the mound, 0-2. It's been great to see Higuera get into two strike counts that benefit him. He was 1-2 against Sean Riley. He's 0-2 uh, against David Mendham and Angel Villalona here. So it'll be interesting to see if he goes off speed, which has been working so far in the first inning. 0-2 once more. That one outside. So a little bit of a waste pitch there. Spun off his hand, 1-2. Yeah, and I'm sure uh, if you ask Julianjo, he'll, he'll tell you that's not where he wanted that off speed pitch to go. But it's okay because he's up 0-2 in the count. He can have a waste pitch or two. Grabs his sign from Ambrose. The one-two from Higuera. Just outside, doesn't get the call. Two-two now. Looked like a pretty good pitch, but yeah, hair off the outside, Dylan. Yeah, a little bit, and uh, it seems like the off-speed pitches have been coming outside to Villalona. Perhaps he crushes the pitches on the inside that are off-speed, so they're trying to work him away here. At least that's what we've seen in the first two off-speed from Higuera. Once more, the 2-2. That one outside as well, so they keep working out there. But the count will move to three balls and two strikes with two outs here. You wonder here with a uh, full count if maybe you try and hit the inside corner. Higuera's got the stuff to do it. Maybe you surprise Villalona at the plate. Gone soft a few times on three and two before. We'll see if they do it again or go right at him with the hard stuff. Full count delivery. Outside, it'll be a walk to Villalona. So now a pair of runners on base, albeit with two outs now in the top of the first for Guelph. Yeah, uh, Higuera looked to work Villalona outside because obviously he is a great bat at the dish, and uh, unfortunately there didn't quite get the zone. Maybe the ball three pitch could have been strike three, but nothing you can really do there. If you're Juliandre Higuera, you uh, executed your pitches, and now you got to... Tough bat and Jeff McLeod to face. McLeod playing his first season for Guelph. 
First pitch, cross for a strike. So Higuera once again working ahead. McLeod, 286 batting average to start the season. Higuera grabs his sign delivery. That one popped up. Going to be a tough play to make. It's going to be a fair ball as it lands behind Froze at third. One run's going to come across the score here, and Guelph will jump out in front to an early 1-0 lead. Yeah, nothing you can do there if you're Julio Andre Higuera. That's one of the most frustrating things as a pitcher because you executed your pitch perfectly. It was a soft little flare into shallow left field. Only problem is that's a no-man's land. Froze, Therapis, and Pena all couldn't get there, so Mike Ambrose goes to talk to uh, Julio Andre to tell him, you know what, you executed your pitch, you did well there. Unfortunately, just didn't get the... The, the right place for that pop-up. So the first run of the ball game comes here in the top of the first, giving Guelph the one to nothing lead. Bring up Polarczyk to the plate. He hits that one right back to Higuera on the mound. Top toss over to one, and it'll end the top of the first. But Guelph will pick up a run on a pair of hits here in the top of one. And lead this one one to nothing as we go to the bottom of the first inning. First at bats here in the bottom of the first inning. Noah Smith, Dylan Baker calling the action. Of course, as always, here on Majors TV, we thank you. For joining us, Dylan, we get to see the familiar, now familiar leadoff man for the majors start things off for us. Yeah, Phil Therapis will lead things off for the majors here today. He uh, he has not missed a game so far this season. He's let off in every single one of them. He's been great at the top of the order. He's a patient hitter, and he gets on base a lot, has a ton of speed. He's your prototypical, ideal leadoff man. He's been great for the majors so far in 2019. Now, Dylan, I'm not one to usually correct you, but I think there was one game in there where he did not lead off because I remember me and you going, why isn't he leading off? We had ourselves a little bit of a conversation as well. Yeah, there was that one game where he hit second behind Jonathan DeForest, and uh, he was my highlighted player for that game, and I had everything ready for him to, be, to, to hit leadoff, but he still did well in that two-hole. Nonetheless, at the top of the lineup for most if not all of the games so far in the major season, he's back at the leadoff spot to start things off and take strike one to start his at-bat. Concepcion gets ahead 0-1 here on Phil Thrapis. Second pitch swung on, miss for a strike. And the cap moves to 0-2 now. Concepcion has a uh, lively fastball out there on the mound for Guelph, and you uh, can't be too fooled by his breaking stuff either. Here's the 0-2 outside for a ball. So it moves the 1-2 here on Thrapis to start things off. You know, one thing I'm just noticing early in my first time seeing Yomar Concepcion is that he falls towards the first base side a little bit. So if you hit a ground ball up the middle, it's likely that he will not get to, the, get to that ball. Next pitch, that one hit in the air. It's going to be hit towards shortstop. And out there to make the grab is Kyle Cush to get the first out of the inning here for Guelph. Yeah, good pitch there from Concepcion. He's got a lively fastball. Nothing you can really do there if you feel Therapis. He tried to drive it the other, the other way, perhaps, and maybe get something uh, down. But he went after the pitch up, and he hit it up. So Carlos Artiega in the lineup for the majors as well tonight. Dylan, you mentioned he had a great game Sunday in Kitchener as well so good to see him in the two spot for the majors yeah he did really well in that two spot there was a first inning hit and run that he got a double on and drove in Phil Therapis he's been really good and he's making his home debut or home 2019 debut here tonight that one in for a strike to start the at bat to Carlos a fan favorite here at Labatt 0-1 oh, and here's Concepcion's delivery that one hit in the air to right Sun playing with it a little bit, but it will be a routine flyout for the second out of the inning, and Ortega is retired. Yeah, Carlos Ortega does a great job of hitting balls the other way into the uh, right center field power alley, I guess, and uh, he's been he's been good 
so far for the majors. Unfortunately, that one was right to the right fielder. And now Izzy Pena will get set to take his swings here in the first inning. No stranger to facing Concepcion. We saw him go deep against him on Saturday afternoon in Guelph. Squares around but pulls back. It's a cross for a strike. 0-1 here on Izzy. You know what, for a big power bat, Izzy certainly has the ability to bump. We've seen it once before. He's not afraid to lay one down and get on base. That one swung on, fouled off over the third base grandstand. So Pena finds himself in an 0-2 hole here. Concepcion has a uh, very hard fast ball, and it seems the Majors might be a little bit late on it to start the ball game. Off speed, fouled off once more here by Izzy. So we'll have to redo that 0-2. Pena, of course, the power bat listed on the point streak site as pitcher, but one of the big power bats on this Majors team. 0-2 to him. Here's the delivery from Concepcion outside for a ball. Cantwell moves to 1-2. and two. Yeah, and Izzy can pitch, and you know what? Late in ball games, if you need a reliever, he can be your guy because he can stick around to hit in the game, too. That way you can leave him, leave his bat in the game. He can hit. He can also pitch, and Cleveland can go over and play first. Izzy also playing outfield. That one outside. Moves the count to 2-2. Two and two. It's where we see him tonight, out in left. He's been uh, in left field a little bit so far this season. It seems most of the time he's out in left field. 2-2 two, two to Pena. Swung on, missed strikeout for Concepcion to end the inning. So the majors go down 1-2-3 here in the bottom of one, and we will go to the second here from London. Guelph out in front, 1-0. to nothing. Welcome back here to Labatt Park. Majors baseball trailing. One and nothing here as we go to the top of the second, and uh, we get to see Higuera back out on the mound for the majors. Dylan did give up that one run, but pitched well in the first inning. Yeah, there was that one run allowed, but you know what? He executed his pitch on that one run, just a little looper into, uh, into shallow, very shallow left field. He was uh, very good with his stuff and executing his pitches in the first inning. Get to see how he works here in the second. First pitch swung on and missed there to start the at-bat. Ricky Murray batting for Guelph. So far this season, struggling it a little bit. 143 batting average. That one across for a strike as well, so Higuera gets up on him 0-2. It's been really good to see you so far. I know he's only faced seven batters, but Aguera's done a good job of uh, hitting both corners inside and outside. 0-2 oh, once more. Swung on, missed. Another strikeout for Higgy on the mound and the first out of the top of the second inning. Well, Leandre Higuera is unbelievable with his strikeouts. I'm telling you, he can strike him out like, uh, like there's no tomorrow. And he, another one here, three strikeouts through one and a third innings. Brandon Keys to bat here for Guelph. Another 143 batting average for the Royals here for Keys. Facing off against Higuera, first pitch. That one fouled off into the Majors dugout for strike one. It's always fun to be a fan when Leandre Higuera is on the mound because there's the promotion with the five strikeouts to get some Buffalo Wild Wings and he usually gets five strikeouts if he's on. A one across for a strike here, so Higuera works ahead. 0 and 2 now. Higuera's gotten ahead 0 2 on the first two batters of this inning so far. The 0 2. He'll check down, say he doesn't go around, he holds up in time. So a ball and a 1 2 count now. Another good pitch from Higuera. Uh, you can see that Keyes was tempted to go after that one. He held back. And uh, one and two still. The count still favors Julian Higuera on the mound. The one two from Higuera in the dirt for a ball. So we'll move to two and two now. We'll see what they go with here on a two two count. They've missed a few times one up and one low. 
We'll see if they bring it in a little bit here on Keys. 2-2. Two, two. That one hit on the ground right back to Hegera on the mound. Throw over to one is in time. So another right there for Hegera. On the score, one to three put out in the second out of the inning. You know, people, uh, a few people tend to joke about pitchers fielding, and uh, Julian Aguirre is a very good fielder out there on the mound. We've seen it in his past starts. He's been great uh, on balls that have come right back to him out there. He got hit in the leg in his last start, but uh, recovered quickly and threw it over to first base to get an out. Gets the ball back on the mound and gets rid of it almost as quickly as he gets it with a little soft toss over, but he's done a good job at fielding it so far. Two outs in the inning. That one swung on and miss. Ethan Moen, uh, the batter now for Guelph. Moen is a uh, speedy center, center fielder that the Royals have in their nine hole. That one outside for a ball. Count moves to one and one here on Moen. Moen hails from way out in Calgary, Alberta. He's on a 1-1 count now with Higuera. Just a bit inside. So the one here. It's there from Higuera, just in the corner. Maybe if Mike Amber is able to hold him, Mike get the strike call, but all the movement to Guerra's fastball in. All of it very tough to catch. The 2-1 and miss there. Another two-strike count for Higuera on the mound. 2-2 two and two this one. We'll see what they go with here on 2-2. Two and two. Higuera has his sign from Ambrose. Leg kick. Delivery. Swung on and missed. Another strikeout to end the inning here. So Aguera is looking good through his first two innings. And another strikeout, Dylan. Yeah, another strikeout from Julian Andre Aguera. Two innings, four strikeouts. Julian Andre Aguera is such a great strikeout pitcher for the majors, and his stuff is really working here tonight. So we'll see the majors come to bat in the bottom of the second. When we return, it will be the four, five, six batters in the order for the majors. We are back here at Labatt Park, and Cleveland Brownlee gets set to bat here for the majors to lead things off in the bottom of the second inning. Dylan Cleveland has been swinging a good bat since last weekend. Two home runs, his first two of the season, both absolutely launched. Oh, yeah, they were absolute bombs from Cleveland Brownlee, and uh, hopefully he can carry some of that over at home here tonight as he's uh, looking to get back to where he was uh, last year. Off-speed pitch to start him off, over for a strike, so moves the count to 0-1. Here's the 0-1 delivery outside and low in the dirt, ball one. one one about to be delivered here. It is the Cleve, swung on and missed. So he moves the count to one and two now on Cleveland. Designated hitter in the ball game, of course, for the majors. Cleveland with a big cut there on uh, on that last pitch. He was looking to take that one all the way to the bridge out there in left field, and you can't be looking to do too much if you're Cleveland right now. I know you're hitting the ball well. That one hit in the air to left center underneath it, and making the grab out in center is Bowen for the first out of the inning. Cleveland made solid, co solid contact once again. It's been really good to see from him as that ball was a rocket to left center. Unfortunately for Cleveland, uh, Ethan Moen was right there to make the play. 
So Ethan Moen makes the grab, and now Byron Reichstein will bat for the majors. He's been off to a pretty good start as well, 256 batting average. Three long balls for him. He'll get set to face off against Concepcion. And that one is going to be outside for a ball, 1-0. Byron also hit a home run in Kitchener on Sunday, dead center field. Hit that one in the first inning over in Kitchener on Sunday afternoon. Majors got off to the to a good start in Kitchener. Four nothing, I believe, was the score at one point. Or sorry, four to one was at the score at one point, but unfortunately they lost the lead. Byron swings through that one for a strike. So Concepcion gets himself back in the count here, two and one. You know, Byron also had a rough first few games, but he's gotten back into it in a big way. He's hit a few home runs. He's hit a few doubles. He's been really good. Swings through that one for a strike. Two and two now. All three of Byron's home runs this year on the road. Nimberry, two in Kitchener. Here's the pitch. That one swung on and missed for a strikeout. So Concepcion gets the strikeout. Or the second out of the inning here. You know, the Majors have had really big swings against uh, Yomar Concepcion out there on the mound for Guelph. And you can't, you can't be too big against a good pitcher like Concepcion. Yes, if you because sorry, if you hit the fastball, it's going to go on its own with how hard it is. So if you're the majors, you got to shorten up a little bit. Can't be taking huge swings, and uh, the ball travel on its own with how hard that fastball is coming in from Yomar Concepcion. So now we get to have our first look at Chris Chambers in the 2019 season. That one across for a strike to start the at bat to him. Chambers was doing pretty well uh, away from London. Down 0-1 in the count. Here's the delivery from Concepcion inside for a ball count. Moves the 1-1. One one. Chambers moved out to uh, California after his first in with the majors. And uh, he, was, he was well known and loved up here. He was a great ball player. A lot of happy people to see him back in the Forest City. Swings through that one. Count moves to one and two. So a good count here for Concepcion. He's been working well through the first inning and two-thirds now. Here's the one-two pitch. Just going to miss on Chambers, so we'll move to a two-two count. You know, Majors fans may not remember it. Some Majors fans might not. Some Majors fans might. Uh, Chambers also a very patient hitter at the plate. Does not let himself get cheated up there. 2-2 to Chambers. That one popped up and towards the grandstand on the third base side. It'll be a foul ball. And they'll have to redo that 2-2 pitch. Be interesting to see if, uh, Reichstein's, or sorry, if Chambers sees... Concepcion's pulverizing breaking ball here. Uh, the 2-2 pitch, delivery. That one popped up once again out of play. And into the parking lot over the third base grandstand. I don't know if that went into the parking lot. It looked like there was a great grab made by a fan out there reaching over the wall to make a nice play. Nonetheless, the 2-2 here once again to Chambers. That one on the ground to second. A couple hops and a throw over to one. So Chambers is retired on the ground ball to Polarczyk, and the inning is over. The Majors unable to grab any runs, no hits. And we will go to the third here at Labatt. Guelph still out in front, one to nothing. Welcome back here as Kyle Cush gets set to Lead things off here for Guelph. That one fouled off out of play. His uh, first at bat, he struck out looking. The first of four strikeout victims already for Juliandre Higuera. A one for Higuera. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Cross for a strike. So once again, here Higuera gets up 0 2 on another batter. 
Yes, this is uh, one of several batters that Julio Andre Aguera has gotten up 0-2 against, and uh, see how he finishes them off here. Some looking on a cold third strike, and another victim of Aguera five already in the ball game. Julio Andre Aguera has great breaking stuff, and that was a great, great, great breaking ball, pounding the inside corner and getting Kevin Cush looking for the second time in the ball game. So into the third inning now. Higuera has already got his fifth punch out. Working well so far into the ball game. One out here in the top of the third. Is Mendham gets set to bat. Someone hit on the ground. A tough play. But he will reach over there at first base with one out here in the inning. Yeah, David Mendham uh, in his first at bat, he hit one on the ground to Thrapis. And it was another well-placed slowly hit ground ball and that one uh, almost got through was so slow that maybe Mendham tried to would have tried to get to second base uh, even if it just rolled right to Izzy Pena in left field because of how slowly it was hit good job by Phil Therapis cutting it off and making sure that the ball goes no further than the edge of the outfield grass so Mendham on first now one out in the inning rings to the feet perennial power hitter Sean Riley been around a long time here in the IBL. There's the first pitch to him. That one fouled off. Higuera gets up 0-1. Higuera looking in, grabbing his sign from Ambrose. Looks over to one quickly but delivers to the plate. That one right across. Riley checks his swing, but it's there anyways, 0-2. Good pitch there from uh, Julio Andre Higuera right down Main Street, and uh, Riley checked his swing. Didn't matter. It was a strike anyway. We'll see what they come with here on 0-2 to Riley. The delivery, that one hit on the ground and right through the shift there. The Majors playing Riley to pull. And he hits one right where the second baseman, Carlos Arteaga, would have been. But he's going to be on with a soft base hit. Yeah, and uh, that's one of the most frustrating things you can experience as a pitcher. Uh, the, um, sorry, the shift was playing him to pull, and unfortunately there is a giant, giant hole in the uh, right side. And Arteaga would have been right there, would have been right to him had he played in his normal position. Unfortunately, he was not there. And now the Royals have runners at first and second. You see where Arteaga is right now at second base. He was probably another 10 feet to the left on Riley there. The base hit squeaks through. and Now that one up the middle. It's going to be a base hit. They're going to wave home Mendham. The throw to the plate will be late. Mendham will come across the score here. And Guelph will jump out to a 2 to nothing lead. And Helvi Alona is such a uh, pure power bat. And he lined that one directly up the middle. And... Um, it drove home the Royals' second run of the ball game, and it's crazy what the shift can do when uh, it does not work. Is that one allowed an extra runner to get or get on base, avoiding a double play for the Royals, and allowed a run to score? So one out in the inning, still runners on first and second. After the RBI single there from Villalona, that one hit in the air to right field. Back underneath it and making the grab is Byron. He'll get the throw in, but it will not be in time at third base. So it will be a fly out there for the second out of the inning. Good pitch there by Higuera. Good bounce back after the RBI single. Byron couldn't see it or couldn't see it very much, uh, very well out there in right field. He had to run over and get the and get the ball. Struggled a little bit with the sun. So two outs in the inning. Ambrose just finishes up a quick meeting on the mound there with Higuera. Been pitching well so far in the ball game. A couple of hits squeaking through in odd spots. And the Royals out in front two to nothing. Yeah, Higuera's been uh, very impressive out there on the mound. He, uh, he struck out some batters and really the only well hit ball was uh, in Hal Villalona's single up the middle. That was a liner right back towards Higuera that drove home a run. Other than that, it's been weak contact that the uh, 
Royals have managed to get through. First pitch from Higuera. That one hit down the right field line, but a foul ball. So it hooks just a little bit, and Gant will move to 0-1. Another good breaking ball had Pilarczyk reaching there, and uh, all he could do was drive it foul. The 0 1 is Higuera grabs his sign via Lona at 1. Riley at 3rd. Here's the pitch. Off speed. Called a strike there, so Higuera gets up 0 2 on Pilarczyk. Interesting to see what he comes with 0 2. Sorry, Noah, to interrupt. Uh, but he's gone with two breaking balls to start the at-bat. Maybe come with a fastball now. They say the same thing. Dylan on 0-2. They check around. Doesn't go. A lot of times when you go soft the first two, two, two pitches, and you'll come back with something hard here. It looked like they went low with that one. We'll see if they come back possibly with a fastball high here, Dylan. Yeah, quite possibly. As that was a breaking ball low. And we saw Mike Ambrose go out to Julian Trigger on the mound prior to this at-bat, maybe telling him we're going to bust him with breaking balls. 1-2 here from Higuera. That one fouled off into the grandstand, so we'll have to redo the 1-2. Another pitch that he had Matt Pilarczyk reaching at. Higuera's been good with the breaking stuff today. Been good to see so far. Higuera's off-speed has been working well. Had Pilarczyk reaching a few times already in this at-bat. Here is the 1-2. That one hit on the ground. Throw over to Ortega at second, and the side is retired, but Guelph will pick up another run here in the top of the third inning, and we will go to the bottom. Majors set to bat, down 2 to nothing here on Majors TV. Welcome back to Labatt Park here as the Majors get set to bat here in the bottom of the third inning. It'll be Ambrose to start things off, Dylan, and the Majors look to try to get on the board here, down 2 nothing here in the third. Yeah, get on the board and get into the hit column here uh, in this one as they've been unable to crack Yomar Concepcion. Uh, we take a quick look at the out-of-town scoreboard now. Uh, Arizona is leading Toronto 5-0 in the fourth inning. Minnesota and Detroit are tied 2-2 in the fourth. Uh, and the Raptors and Golden State get underway in about a half hour here. So as far as we know, the game has been started as well over in Hamilton between the uh, Toronto Maple Leafs and the Hamilton Cardinals. We still don't have a score there, so we'll bring you that as soon as we can. Here, though, for the majors, it'll be Ambrose to lead things off. First pitch to him. Call the strike, 0-1. Ambrose so far this year, just a 200 average. That one inside almost hits him. Ambrose certainly not a stranger to that. Seems to get hit by pitch a lot. He most certainly does, and uh, he's one of the players that gets hit the most in the IBL, I'd say. Already's been hit five times. Hits that one over to third. It is picked up for the first out of the inning. Good contact there from Mike Ambrose. A little looping liner to the third baseman, however. Uh, Major's still waiting for their first hit, and they got Steve Froze to try and do it now. So Steve froze to try to get things going with one out here for the Majors. We'll see if he can do it. Ambrose, the first out of the inning. First pitch, cross for a strike to him. 0-1 oh the count. You know, it's got to be difficult as a hitter. You've seen Concepcion throw that hard fastball on almost every pitch, and then you get a breaking ball. First pitch of the at-bat. That one across for a strike as well to Froze. 0-2 now on him. We'll see what Concepcion comes with on 0-2 here. Off speed. That one hit on the ground is short. Going to have to come up with a long throw across the diamond. It's a bit high. And throws will reach there with one out here in the inning. Good job by Steve Froze hitting the ball into the hole. And uh, it was going to be a tough play for the uh, Guelph shortstop, Kyle Cush. Made a good throw. It was a little bit high. And I think Steve Froze would have beat it anyway. Now we get to see J.D. Jonathan DeForest come to bat here. He's got Froze on here with one out in the inning. Majors pick up. Air first hit there for Froze. Here is the first pitch to Air. That one hit on the ground. 
It gets through him at second base. Froze is going to round in head to third. He'll be in there standing up. So a little bit of a miscue over there at second base. And DeForest will be on here. Runners at the corners with one out. You know what? That miscue was caused by Steve Froze. Great job there because it seemed that the Guelph second baseman and Matt Pilarczyk was ready to go to second base with that ball, but then he saw Steve Froze slow down. Then he started thinking about having to make a tag on Froze because he had stopped and it would have been an easier play perhaps to run at him. So great job by Steve Froze being aware, stopping right in front of the uh, second baseman, avoiding getting hit by the ball and possibly forcing a tag, getting into the mind of Pilarczyk at second base and likely creating that error. Yeah, it almost looked as if he came to a complete stop out there on his way to second base. Polarczyk saw that and kind of said, why are you stopping before the ball went through his legs? It'll be an error charge to him. Runners on the corners, one out back to the top of the lineup here. That one's thrown over. DeForest back standing up. Not a bad move. Picking off with DeForest at first base. Does have some speed. Plus, the runners on the corners never know what the majors might try to pull. Oh, one here to Phil Thrappes. That one across for a strike here, so the count will go to two strikes. Two strikes on Thrappes. He doesn't let himself get cheated. He's a very good hitter with two strikes as well. On base guy, we'll see what uh, what he does here against Concepcion. Thrappes at the plate here. DeForest on first, throws on second, on third. That one hit on the ground. Can be a tough play. Bobbles it a little bit, but throws will come across and it's going to be ruled a foul ball it looked like it was in fair territory but maybe it hit off the foot of Phil Thrappis I'll have to redo the 0-2 an interesting play there for sure and out of all that, we'll have to redo the 0-2 pitch here on Phil Thrappis. Yeah, I'm not too sure what happened there, but it was ruled foul. Off on the pitch is DeForest. That one fouled off. It'll get out of play. Once again, having to redo the 0-2 pitch here. No, what do you think he comes with here on 0-2? Is it go with a breaking ball or with that strong fastball that we've seen? A lot of options to go to on 0-2. We've seen him go a few times outside, try to get Thrappis to reach. Watch for the curveball here, though, if I'm Conception on the mound. Here's the pitch, off speed. That one hit on the ground. It gets through first base. Froze will come across to score, and Phil Thrappis will have an RBI single here in the bottom of the third inning. I guess the uh, foul ball paid off for the majors there as Phil Thrappis was able to get it between the first and second baseman, get it into right field, allowing Steve Froze to score. Jonathan DeForest is now at second base, and there's only one out. There would have been two had that not been ruled a, uh, a foul ball, and Carlos Artiega has a great shot to drive home another run with DeForest still in scoring position. So now Carlos Artiega gets set to bat here for the majors. Coming in a little bit late this season, but already has three RBIs to his name. Another one stands out there on second base, represented by Jonathan DeForest. Thrappis on first after the RBI single. Still just one out in the inning here. Yeah, just one out, and uh, Artiega's got a great shot. If he can get a ball into the outfield, DeForest has a great chance of scoring with his speed. The pitch. Artiega hits that one in the air to left. It'll drop in front of left field. Brett Wills is going to hold DeForest at third. And a smart hold there as the throw came in rather quickly to the plate, although bobbled a little bit. It will be a single for Carlos Artiega. No RBI there, but the base is loaded now and a good part of the order for the majors. Yeah, now you get the meteor order up with the bases loaded, and I said that DeForest would be able to score with his speed, but even with the speed of Jonathan DeForest, he couldn't score because he had to hold up on the line drive. You can't force yourself into an out or uh, fall into an out there if he didn't hold and... A, a good job by, by DeForest holding. Nothing he can really do there. Brent Wales tried to send him, but then thought better of it and kept him at third base. It would have ended up being a pretty close play at the plate, but he knows that Easy Pena is due up next here. And we'll take their chances with bases loaded and one out. At first pitch outside for a ball, 1-0. and oh. 
Here's the 1-0 delivery to Pena. He hits that one on the ground. It'll get through past Arteaga. One run across the score. Brent Wales lays around another. He'll come in to score. So Pena drives in a pair there on the single. And the Majors hop out in front. 3-2. to two. Great job by Izzy Payne, not trying to do too much with the bases loaded, not trying to drive it out of here or drive it into a gap. He wanted to get on base, wanted to get a ball into the outfield. Didn't matter if it was in the air, didn't matter if it was on the ground, because either way you should be able to score DeForest from third. And uh, he did that there, and he scored Thrapas too. Thrapas, one of the faster players uh, in this order. So now you get runners at the corners for Cleveland Brownlee. Still a guy in scoring position, and only one out. And now Cleveland gets set to bat here. Bottom of the third inning. Three runs already across for the majors in the inning. Another one stands out there on third. Pena on first. And a big at bat here for Cleve. You know he'd love to try and find some outfield grass. Time call there at the plate. You know what? Cleveland's been uh, hitting a bit better of late. He's been hot with the bat. And he was last weekend. Let's see if he can carry that over here. Outside. Leaf thought it was a bit out. It's called a strike here. 0-1. Oh, Cleveland knows the strike zone pretty well, and he thought that one was outside. Unfortunately, did not get the call from Justin Snively behind the plate. 0-1 oh, here. Arteaga F at third. That one out. And Cleve once again thinks it's outside. That one even more off the plate than the last, 0-2. Oh, Cleveland will not get cheated up there with two strikes. <laughs> we'll see if Concepcion goes with off speed here on 0-2 oh, to Cleveland. Here's the pitch. Cleveland hits that one to right. Going to be a tough play to make. It'll drop down the right field line. So Cleveland's going to have a single. Arteaga will come across to score here. It's an RBI single for Cleveland. And the Majors have pushed across their fourth of the inning. Great job by Cleveland staying with that ball, driving it opposite field. And now the Majors have their fourth run of the inning. And they've got a runner in scoring position still with one out as uh, Cleveland did a good job poking that one down the right side. Brent Wales tried to send Izzy Payne to third, but Izzy was so focused on seeing where the right fielder was going to go with the throw that unfortunately he was unable to make it there. I think Izzy also making sure that ball got down in the right field line. It looked like Possibly a chance to come up with the catch in right was McLeod. Nonetheless, it will be a base hit for Cleve. He gets another RBI on the season here. And the major is still pressing. And Dylan, how big is that ball that gets through the legs of Plurichik at second base now? Oh, that is huge, and once again, I give all the credit to Steve Froze because then you give Pilarczyk at second base something else to worry about. Now you've got a runner standing right in front of you. What do you do in that scenario? How do you how do you attack the ball? You can't run at it because then you run into Steve Froze. So tremendous job by Steve Froze, and a ton of praise goes out to him because I think I will for the rest of the game think that it was him that uh, caused that error there and led to this rally. So now Byron Reistein set to bat here. On the third inning, pair of runners on base. That one a called for a strike to start the at-bat. Pena stands on second, Cleve on one. Again, only one out here. ton of damage can still be done by the, uh, by the majors. 0-1 oh, to Byron. Hits that one foul. Back towards the screen, so an 0-2 count now. Snively out to the mound to deliver that ball and give... The Royals catcher keys a little bit of time. See what, they, see what they come with here on 0-2. They had 0-2 on Brownlee as well before he fought one off. Here's the 0-2 pitch up high for a ball. One and two. You know, Byron and Cleveland are similar in the sense that they both won't get cheated at the plate. They will not allow a pitch outside the zone to fool them. Cleveland swung at a pitch that might have been a little bit outside, but he took it to right field. So if they do swing at a pitch out of the zone, they usually know what they're going to do with it. In the dirt there for ball two. It'll be a 2-2 count on number 22 here. Still one out in the inning, though, as mentioned, Dylan. So the Majors have been pressing here with one out. Yeah, and, uh, and interesting oh. to see a throw over to Cleveland Brownlee at first base. Yeah, not sure what's going on there. You never know when the uh, majors will 
pull a double steal with uh, Izzy Pena and Cleveland Brownlee at first and second, but uh, Angel Villalona snuck in behind Cleveland, and uh, there was a throw made. They're laughing about it out there, and I believe it hit Cleveland out there at first base. The 2-2 two -two to Byron. He fights that one off down in to the seats just in front of the Majors bullpen down the line. So another 2-2 two -two count will come here to Byron. Interesting to see what Concepcion goes with here on 2-2. Two and two. Does he come with that overpowering fastball, or does he go with the breaking stuff to try and put Byron away with a uh, wipeout curve? 2-2 two -two pitch to Byron. That one will miss, so it will go to a full count here. One out in the inning. And with maybe a bit more speed on the bases, you might try sending the runners here, but I don't know if they'll be sending the two on. Here is the 3-2 delivery from Concepcion. Byron pops that one in the air. Playable in foul territory. And there to make the grab. So a good catch over there just over in front of the Majors dugout. Good play by uh, David Mendham going after that ball, getting to it before he got on the warning track. Knowing where everything was, knowing where the fence was, he uh, made a good play staying with that in foul territory. So now Chambers gets another at bat here, bottom of the third inning. Does have a runner in scoring position still. Can you out there? We'll see if he can try to find some outfield grass. First pitch outside for a ball. The uh, one and zero. The majors have had a bat around inning in the uh, bottom of the third as Chris Chambers is the ninth man to bat in this frame. That one across for a strike. One and one now. Behind Chambers is Ambrose. He let off the inning with a out, and that one called a strike. Chambers doesn't like it. Count moves to one and two. Chambers knows his strike zone, didn't think that one was in there, and fans didn't either, but call goes the Royals' way. 1-2. Fought off by Chambers. Foul territory. Mend him after it. Tough play to make. It'll be the catcher coming over. Keys makes the grab. And the side is retired, but the Majors pick up four runs here in the bottom of the third inning. Jump out in front to a 4-2 to lead. And that is where we are as we go to the fourth when we return here on Majors TV. Welcome back here as Higuera gets set on the mound there. Swung on and missed for the first strike. 0-1 here. Higuera once again working ahead. Yeah, Julian Higuera had a bit of a rough time in the first inning with first pitch strikes, but after that he's really settled in and thrown a lot of first pitch strikes in this, in this outing. Next one across for a strike as well. So Higuera working ahead. And Dylan, how many times tonight have we seen Higuera work to an 0-2 count? He's been great at doing that. Oh, yeah, for sure. And I, I don't know how many times exactly. It's been too tough to count with how many. But uh, another 0-2 count, another swing and a miss, and another strikeout. Another strikeout there for Higuera. He's been doing great tonight. And that one starts off the fourth inning here. Another strikeout for Higuera. And Keys will come to the plate now with one out. Keys in his last at bat grounded out right back to the mound. And Julian Andre Aguirre out there. Here is the first pitch, that one outside. Pardon me, Keys at the plate now. That was Murray with the strikeout to start the inning. Higuera across for a strike. 1-1. One, one. Keys does a good job of working on the count. He, was, uh, he had a 2-2 two -two count and hit a few foul balls his last time up. 1-1 one one here. Here's the 1-1. One, one. That one hit in the air. Byron took a step back on it first but comes in now. Makes the grab out there in right. Second out of the inning here. Aguirre, they're working quick here in the top of four. 
He certainly is, and he's been really good. He's been on his game tonight, throwing a lot of strikes, getting a lot of strikeouts, and when he doesn't get a strikeout, it's weak contact either to the outfield or on the infield. It's been very, very, very good to see. Two outs now in the top of the fourth. And we get to see Moen come to the plate now. He'll have to bat with two outs in the inning facing Higuera. First delivery, that one. Going to miss for a ball, 1-0. One zero across for a strike there. One and one, and Guerra works his way back into the count. Guerra never rattled by a first pitch ball, getting right back in there with uh, strike one. Missing outside with that one, so he's done a good job at working back into the count when he misses. But we'll have to work back from a two one count now. 2-1 to the bottom of the order, Ethan Moen. Top of the order stands on deck, and you'd love to try and turn things over and go into the fifth facing the top. Yeah, for sure. You want to avoid having them hit in this inning, especially if, if uh, Moen does get on, they'll have a runner on base to do it with. And it looks like there was a broken bat on that last foul ball. So 2-2. Two and two. That broken bat will give Ambrose and Higuera time to go out to the mound, discuss things, and a lot of times on these, Dylan, you'll see that they'll go out there and Ambrose will come back, won't even bother putting down signs because they already discussed what pitch they want to come with here, especially on a two-strike count, two and two. Yeah, and uh, great great chance for them to go discuss it in case Higuera didn't agree with the sign that Ambrose was originally going to put down. Going out to the mound and talking to Juliandre out there uh, gives him the opportunity to suggest something else, and they can get on the same page. They have the time to do it with the broken bat there from Ethan Mullen. A 2-2 count. Higuera trying to work his way through the top of the fourth inning here. Here is the 2-2 delivery. That one fouled off, out of play. So a battle brewing at the plate here as Moen fouls that one off. Yeah, Moen also had a battle uh, in the second inning. Another one here in the fourth. So we get set with the sign. Leg kick delivery on 2-2. Swung on, missed another strikeout there for Higuera. And oh boy, is he looking good tonight. Ends the fourth with a strikeout. He's through four. Just two runs across for Guelph. Great, great job by Julian Andre Higuera here tonight so far. The off-speed stuff, well, it is biting. Another great strikeout there. Another strikeout swing. He's had four strikeouts swinging. Sorry, five strikeouts swinging. Two strikeouts looking. Seven strikeouts through four innings of work. He's averaged more than a strikeout per inning so far in this wonderful outing. The Majors come to bat when we return here on Majors TV. Welcome back here to LeBat Park. We go to the bottom of the fourth inning now, and Mike Ambrose gets set to bat here for the Majors. They jumped out in front to a 4-2 to two lead last time at Bat Dillon, and that is where we go here after another scoreless inning from Higuera on the mound. Yeah, Julio Andre Higuera has been, always does a great job of keeping Majors in ball games, and you know what? Uh, the Majors are now up by two here in the bottom of the fourth. Ambrose hit that one high and deep to left, but it will stay in the ballpark and will be caught for the first out of the inning. Just got a little bit underneath that one. It will be the first out. Yeah, just a bit underneath it. Still gave it a ride to uh, left center field. A good job by Mike, but uh, unfortunately the center fielder was right there to make the grab. So now Steve Froze, who Dylan, we credited him with getting that rally started last time for the majors. Yes, we did a great heads-up base running play by Froze going between first and second. So uh, he, he probably ignited that rally. I still think he did. You do as well, Noah. So uh, let's see if we can ignite another one here. Started the rally the same way back in the bottom of the third inning, the last inning we played. Ambrose started the inning with a fly out, and then Froze got on and really started getting the magic started. So we'll see if he can do the same here with one out. 
Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what he does here and hopefully gets on base once again to ignite something for the majors. That one outside, so he falls to a 2-0. Now Conception does on Steve Froze. Across for a strike. Two and one to Steve Froze now. That one fouled off. The Alona down close to the fence, but it will get out of play just out of view of our camera. And the count will go to two and two. The Alona did a good job going all the way to the fence there, attempting to make you grab. Unfortunately for him, it was just out of his reach. Uh, Fell looks like on the looked like on the stairs in the first three rows in foul territory. Two two one out here on Froze. Pitch from Concepcion. That one fouled straight back to the screen. So we'll have to redo that two two pitch. Here's the 2-2 once more, off speed. Froze does a good job battling at the plate. Great, two and two. Great battle brewing here between Concepcion and Froze. Two and two count. Froze does not get cheated up at the plate. Concepcion knows how to attack a hitter, so it's been fun to watch. Getting set once more for another 2-2 pitch from Concepcion. Here it is. Leg kick, delivery, Froze battles it off once more. A good battle brewing at the plate there by Steve Froze, trying to get things started with one out. Great battle, great job at the plate. Quality at bat here for sure for Steve Froze. Wasting pitches as well, actually, of Yomar Concepcion, who is a good arm. You want to get him out of the ballgame as quickly as possible, and, uh, and he's done a great job of that so far in this at bat. Two and two. One out. Off speed. Froze. Battles once more. Majors Vince recognizing the great at bat going on there for Steve Froze against Concepcion. It's tough to do against a guy like Concepcion who can attack you in so many different ways. He's got that hard fastball. can put it on the outside, inside corner, or uh, put it up. And he's got a great breaking ball that can dive away from you. Here it is once more. That one up and in. So... A ball to break up the pattern. Also pushes the count to full at three balls and two strikes. The sign and delivery here. Outside part of the plate called strike three there on Steve Froze. He goes down looking for the second out of the inning there and Conception wins the battle. Yeah, you know what? You can't be uh, too frustrated out there if you're the majors. If you're Steve Froze, you had an incredible battle with uh, Conception out there on the bump, and uh, Froze was Froze did a good job of fighting fighting a lot of good pitches off, and you can't be you can't be mad at yourself on that strikeout. First pitch to Jonathan DeForest across for a strike here. Also got on base during that rally in the bottom of the third. Got on base and scored a run in that uh, third inning. He hits that one into the right center field gap, giving chase. It'll drop. DeForest makes the round and heads to second, and that is where he will stand with two outs. A double for J.D. And a chance for the majors to score here with two gone. Yeah, that is the uh, second time we've seen Jonathan DeForest drive a ball into one of the gaps to get an extra base hit. He has the ability to do so. He's driven the ball all the way to the wall in the past, so great job there. Now the Majors have a runner in scoring position with two away for Phil Thrapis, who had an RBI single his last time up. Indeed he did, Dylan. RBI single for Thrapis his last time up. And now he's got a chance to do the same here, albeit with two outs in this inning. After the two-out double from DeForest. Majors looking to push another run across here. That one hit short. 
And out to make the grab is going to be another shortstop. Kyle Cush and the inning is over. So the Majors get a two-out double, but they're unable to score any more runs here. And we will go to the fifth from Labatt Park. Majors out in front, 4-2. to two. Welcome back here to Labatt Park, Dylan. Another update from our out-of-town scoreboard as well, our most recently updated scores here. Two games underway in the IBL tonight. Yes, two games are underway. We finally have a score for Hamilton and Toronto. 7 nothing in the third inning there. Kitchener up one nothing on Brantford. That is in Brantford. The Diamondbacks still lead the Blue Jays 5 nothing in the fourth. Minnesota and Detroit tied at threes. In the fourth inning there as well, and the Raptors just about ready for tip-off against Golden State at Oracle. Here at Labatt, we move to the top of the fifth inning here. Higuera working well on the mound. Still, Dylan, we've been impressed with his stuff so far. We've been more than impressed. Well, Andre Higuera has been very good out there on the mound for the majors so far in his four innings of work. Seven strikeouts and weak contact has been the theme throughout this one. Count moves to 1-2 now here. Back to the top of the order as mentioned for Guelph. Kyle Cush batting. Here is the delivery. That one swung on miss. So pardon me, now the count will move to 1-2. Getting a little bit ahead of ourselves, Dylan, but you can't really blame us the way Higuera has been pitching ahead in the count this evening. Yeah, you wouldn't be shocked. There's over to 1. It will be... A 4-3 to three put out to start the inning, and the first out of the inning for Higuera on the mound. Yeah, and uh, like we've mentioned, Julian Higuera has worked very well in this one. It's been strikeouts are very, very, very weak contact so far in this one. Mendham set to bat here for the Royals now. Been on base a pair of times to start this ball game, although it hasn't hit the ball overly hard. Well, how many uh, Royals can say they have hit the ball very hard against Julio Andre Aguirre here tonight? Here's the pitch, that one. Called a strike on the off speed. Oh, one now on Mendham. And Dylan, like you mentioned, the Royals just a few weak contact hits across the board there. They do have five hits so far in the ball game, but Higuera's done a pretty good job at, at making sure their hits are not hit overly hard. Here's the 0-1. Goes off speed again, called strike. He's done a very good job at doing so, Noah, and uh, the off speed is working, the fastball is moving, everything has been great. Everything's been working for Julio Andre Higuera here tonight. It's shown the results, only five hits allowed through four and a third innings, and uh, he'll look to continue with more of the same throughout the rest of the ballgame. 0-2 oh, from Higuera, swung on. And missed by Mendham, so it'll be a strikeout there. Another one for Higuera. The second out of the inning. Eight strikeouts. Eight strikeouts for Juliandre Higuera in this ball game so far. And he he has been dominant in this one. He has been on his game. And now he's got a tough task in Sean Riley, but uh, Riley's singled and struck out so far in two at bats in this one. So, Riley, you can't go at him without knowing his power. Two outs in the inning. And this is the time that you really want to be facing Sean Riley, though, Dylan. Two outs, nobody on. That is exactly how you want to be facing Sean Riley. Is he, he does have a very good bat, but it's so much better to face him with no runners in scoring position. Nobody on, in fact, because that can limit his damage quite a bit. Swings through that one, so... Count evens at 1-1 one, one now for Higuera on the mound. Done a good job using his off-speed pitch tonight. One thing we've seen Higuera do a lot in his start so far for the majors is, is rely a lot on that hard fastball, but he does have a good off-speed. We've seen him use it a lot tonight. He has used a lot of that off-speed tonight. He's been very, very good with it as well. as uh, He's used it against Sean Riley, and it's worked very nicely. That was a fastball up high. Count moves to 2-1 and one now on Sean Riley, the three-hitter in the order for the Royals. Gorgeous night for baseball here at Labatt. A pretty good crowd packed into Labatt Park as well as the Majors host the Royals. Here's the 2-1 from Julio Andre Higuera. That one popped up. We'll get out of play, so 
A 2-2 two -two count now. 2-2 two two count. Another count where Julian Triguera has gotten to two strikes against a Royals hitter. He has been very, very good so far in this ballgame. Interesting to see if he can finish off Sean Riley for the second time in the ballgame. 2-2. Two -two. Sean Riley at the dish and Higuera looking for his ninth punch out of the game. That one hit on the ground though. Froze diving. It gets past diving. Froze and it gets past diving. Thrap is so a base hit for Riley on a 2-2 two -two count. You know right there that ball wasn't hit too hard either. It was in, in the 5-6 hole. Nothing you can really do there. Froze laid out for it. Thrap is laid out for it. Just a uh, perfectly placed ground ball there for Sean Riley and you're not out of the woods yet you got Angel Villalona coming up next he uh he has walked and singled in two plate appearances so far in this ball game and you know what if you can limit the damage to just a single in the inning that'd be great that's certainly what Higuera is going to try to do there Ambrose will come out for a quick little mound visit out there go over what they want to do to Angel Villalona as mentioned Went deep against the majors last week, so they got to be careful with him. Yeah, and I don't have Villalona such a good hitter, and he's the only guy that I've really uh, noticed has hit the ball hard in the ball game. And it was that single line drive right back up the middle that was the only hard hit ball in the game for the Guelph Royals. So Villalona knows what it, knows what to expect from Higuera, and uh, big pitch, big at bat coming up. We'll see what they do with Villalona here to start him. Riley on first. Quick look from Higuera, but he comes to the plate. Strike one to get things started on the fastball. Higuera shows no fear out there on the mound. Villalona hit one right back towards him in the uh, third inning. An RBI single. Comes right back with a fastball down the heart of the plate. Gets a called strike. It'll be 0-1 here on Villalona. Higuera continues to work. The wine delivery and that ball fouled off. So another 0-2 count here for Higuera on the mound. Two fastballs in the at-bat so far. 0-2. We've seen the breaking stuff work so far in the game for Higuera. Do you go with it here on 0-2? I say yes. We'll see what Mike Ambrose and Julian Aguirre have to say about that. The 0-2. Ambrose sets up. They come inside. Fastball strike three. Ring them up. Villalona goes down looking. And another punch out for Higuera in the ball game. Nine for Julian Aguirre in the game. And he has been dominant in this one. A fantastic start so far. And we will go to the bottom of the fifth. Majors out in front, 4-2. to two. Welcome back to Labatt Park here. We go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Majors out in front, 4-2. to two. Noah Smith, Dylan Baker on the call this evening. Dylan, another beautiful evening for baseball here at Labatt Park as we're traded to a good ball game here. Majors been swinging the bat well as well as the good pitcher from Julio Andre Higuera. Yeah, Higuera has been great tonight. The offense has been good. They came around in the third inning. They scored early as we had recommended in the uh, pregame show, and the offense has been great. It's a beautiful, beautiful night for baseball. The weather is just perfect, and uh, the majors are doing pretty well against Yomar Concepcion, who is out there for his fifth inning of work. First pitch to Ortega across for a strike here. Good to see him back in the line, and we've mentioned a few times. Loves the play in the majors, pinstripes he does. Hits that one on the ground. Up the middle. It's going to be a tough play to make. And they won't even make a throw. The speed of Carlos beats him to the bag. And it's going to be a leadoff base hit here for the Majors. A good placement on that hit for Carlos Artiega. A ground ball. A chopper right back up the middle. Great job uh, ranging over for Guelph by uh, Polarchik out there at second base. Unfortunately, could not get there quick enough because Artiega does have speed in that two hole. And he was able to beat the ground ball out. Pena now for the majors, Ismael Pena. He'll bat with Carlos on first. Nobody out in the inning. First pitch outside for a ball. 
So we'll see Pena probably try to swing here, but wouldn't be surprised if you see Carlos make a move to second. Yeah, they know not? that throw over. Throw over there. I guess the uh, you and the Guelph Royals were on the same page, expecting maybe Artiega running there, and why not? He got a good guy uh, go, or guy who can put bat on ball in Izzy Pena at the plate, and the faster guy like Carlos Artiega, so if it doesn't pan out, he might be able to beat the throw. Possibly a hit and run on there as Carlos was off, but Pena fouls that one off. A little bit of a protective swing there. One and one now. Yeah, it seemed that uh, he went out to get that ball because uh, because of the hit and run, normally you see Izzy Pena take that pitch. One and one. Not a pitch that Pena usually swings at, but that's what makes you think it might have been a hit and run. The one, one. Pena hits that one. It's going to be another base hit. Carlos takes long strides around second. He'll go to third. Strong throw, slide, and safe at third. Carlos is in sliding, and the majors are in business here to start the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, and you know what? Two guys that singled back in that rally in the third inning. Single again here. Great job by Carlos Ortega. Aggressive base running, knowing his own speed, getting around second base quickly, and diving into third, just barely beating a strong throw from right field. And uh, now the Majors have guys at the corners for Cleveland Brownlee. So Cleveland Brownlee set to bat here for the Majors with runners, as mentioned, on the corners. Nobody out in the inning. So Brownlee so far in the season, two long balls, nine RBIs. We'll see if he can put a ball in play here and score another run. The corner infield is going to be playing in, it looks like with nobody out. Yeah, corners in, middle of double play depth, and uh, hopefully for the Royals, they can turn something here up the middle. They'll concede the run to get a double play. Swung on miss there on an off-speed pitch by Brownlee. Now the Royals certainly will take two outs and trade it for a run at this point in the ball game. They're not too late in it where they can afford to go down 5-2, to two, so they'll certainly take the two outs in exchange for a run, but the corners will play somewhat in and try to protect if it's hit hard. That one in the dirt, locked up, but the Kent will move to 1-1 one, one on Brownlee. Yeah, and the risk you take, though, is Julio Andre Aguirre has been dealing so far in his start, so it's going to be tough to work your way back into the ball game, but you do have four more innings to do it. So one and one now. Here's the pitch to Cleve. He swings right through that one. Count will go to one and two. Big cut there from Cleveland. Uh, breaking ball on the first two pitches. He couldn't get to it. And then uh, huge, huge cut there from Cleveland on one and one. Once again, a one-two here. Here's the pitch to Cleve. He hits that one on the ground. Carlos won't come home, but it's bobbled. And now Carlos falls down at third. He's got a caught in a run down between third and home. He goes home and will be tagged out. Nopeña will advance to third there. Cleve at one, but Carlos gets caught and will be tagged out at home for the first out. So score that a 5-1-6-2. Fielder's choice for Cleveland Brownlee, and nothing you can really do there if you're Carlos Artiega. Unfortunately for him, he tripped and fell between third and home. Izzy Pena was able to move up two bases on the play, though, in the rundown. So good good there. You get runners right back on the corners. Unfortunately, now you got one away. So the majors will try to do it with one away now. Unfortunately for them, for a double play could end the inning, but... They'll look to try and score. Cleveland jumping around over there at first base. Here's the first one to Byron, fouled off and out of play. Yeah, interesting to see Cleveland jumping around. Obviously not necessarily a threat to run, but you never know. You never know when someone can uh, steal a base. We've seen it in the past. The pitch, Byron hits that one on the ground. Up the middle, it gets past the diving second baseman. Pena will come across to score and an RBI single for Byron Reichstein. 
Great job by Byron. A really hard hit ball right back up the middle, and the majors are up five to two now. And he stayed with that ball, drove it hard on the ground, right back where it came from, and a little bit of a little bit of uh, discomfort maybe or uh, displeasure from Yomar Concepcion out there on the mound with runners at first and second and one out having given up that run there. So they'll move around everyone a little bit. Swinging through that one is Chambers. Count goes to 0-1 here on the newest pinstripe London major. Looking for a hit here with a runner in scoring position. It would be his first 2019 hit as a major for Chris Chambers. He's grounded out to second and popped out to the catcher in two prior at-bats in the ballgame. Looking for his first hit in his second stint with the majors. Of course, we mentioned the success he had in his first stint. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Hits that one foul towards the first base dugout. Yeah, we'll move to 1-2. and two. Good thing about Chambers, he doesn't get cheated up there with two strikes. He knows what's going to be a ball, knows it's going to be a strike, and knows how to attack a pitcher. We'll see what they go with here on 1-2. Swung on, miss, so a big strikeout there for the Royals. Second out of the inning. You know what's been good to see in the game for the Majors? Uh, Concepcion, known to be a good strikeout pitcher. The Majors have only struck out four times in this ball game, and uh, they've, they've stayed away from the strikeouts as much as possible in the ball game. That's been really, really good to see, and it's probably been one of the bigger reasons that they've uh, had, a, had a good game offensively because of the fact that they are not swinging and missing at very many pitches. Two outs now for Ambrose. First pitch missing inside for a ball. So the count will move to 1-0 here. Ambrose trying to drive in Cleveland, who stands at second. That one up high, 2-0 now. Ambrose in the ball game, two flyouts. Actually, a line out to the third baseman and a fly out to center field. Pardon me. Pitch once more to Ambrose. This one called a strike on the outer corner. 2-1 as Concepcion works his way back into the count a little bit. Justin Snidely behind the plate has been generous on the corners so far in the ballgame. Here's the 2-1. Ambrose pops that one. They're out of play. Two and two now. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. Guelph has two runs. Majors have five. Ambrose number 32. A lot of twos out there on the field right now. Standing on second. Cleveland Brownlee. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Ambrose takes that one into center. Cleveland is going to be waved home. The throw... Not in time and offline. Cleveland will score. Ambrose now rushing to second. A heads up play. And he'll be in there with an RBI single moving up to second base. And the Majors extend their lead to 6-2. to two. Great job by Mike Ambrose. A hard line drive right back up the middle. And he drives home uh, Cleveland Brownlee there. And moves up to second base on a heads up play on the throw in. So the Majors now lead at 6-2. to two. Good heads up base running from Mike Ambrose. And it looks like a reliever oh. is heading out to that Guelph bullpen right now. So finally some action down in the Guelph bullpen. Concepcion now giving up six runs here in the bottom of the fifth inning. Steve Froze set to bat. And you like the 6-2 lead, Dylan, but two big runs stand out there in scoring position. Froze breaks his bat. That one over top. Going to be a tough play. Across the diamond in time at one. So the inning will end on that play to Steve Froze, but the Majors pick up a pair of runs here in the bottom of the fifth. We will go to the sixth inning. Dylan Baker on the call when we return. Majors out in front, 6-2. to two. Welcome back to Majors Baseball on Majors TV. The London Majors taking on the Guelph Royals. They lead it 6-2, to two, the Majors do. In the top of the sixth inning, Julian Aguera has had a dominant performance so far on the mound, and he goes right back out there for the top of the sixth inning. He's looked great out there so far, Dylan, and I believe, what is his strikeout total up to? Nine now, unbelievable start for him. Great start for Julian Here's his first pitch. That is going to be a called strike to Jeff McLeod, the right fielder 
for this Royals ball club, and the top of the sixth is underway. Garrett gets the sign he wants from Ambrose, and the 0-1 is going to be a called strike two, so 0-2 now to Jeff McLeod, and another first pitch strike in this at-bat, another 0-2 count, Noah. The 0-2. On the ground to first base. Bobbled over there by Chambers. Throw to first gets by Higuera. And so now McLeod reaches. Interesting to see what the ruling will be on that one. A tough play to make over there at one is it's hit pretty hard, but takes a little bit of a funny hop at the end there up into the chest of Chambers. Blocks it up well and almost able to recover for the out there. Nonetheless, Guelph will have a leadoff runner. Yeah, it's going to be ruled a, an error, I believe. I don't see the uh, hit total augmenting for... Yes, there we go. It is, it's going to be ruled an error. Not sure if it's an error on Chambers or Higuera, who also dropped the ball over at first base. But uh, the Royals now have a runner on after that error. Matt Pilarczyk on the, or at the plate sorry, against Tagera. Here's the first pitch. That's going to be just missing the inside corner. Count is 1-0 now. Dylan, yeah, we go back to that last at-bat. It's probably been at least a dozen times in the ballgame that Higuera's got up 0-2 on a batter. Unfortunately, not the way he wanted that one to go. But he's done a good job of getting ahead. He's done a very good job of swinging a miss there on a pitch outside of the zone. Count is now 1-1. One and one. And Like you mentioned, Noah, unfortunately, wasn't able to finish off McLeod and... Tough play over there at first base for Chris Chambers. Unfortunately, wasn't, he was unable to make it. He's got one and one now on Polarczyk. Higuera comes set, the 1-1 one, one home. Line drive right field. Reitstein's after it. He won't get there. That's going to drop in front of him. He cuts it off nicely and fires a rocket right back into Phil Therapis at second base, holding the runners to a base each. So first and second now for Ricky Murray. Good base hit there. Good job to stay with it. Drive it the down the right field line. So now Guelph kind of in business here to start the top of the sixth inning. And for the first time, no one warming yet in the bullpen, but a few stretches going on down there in the London bullpen. They get her into his sixth inning of work here. This is the, probably the first time really since they scored some runs that he's faced a little bit of adversity. Nobody out. Runners on first and second. Yeah, and he's been cruising along in the last few innings. Just a few stretches now. Brent Wales going out to right field, possibly getting someone up. But uh, no reason to panic if you're Hagari. You have a four-run lead. And stepping out is the batter, Ricky Murray. Wanted to take some extra time. I think he has something in his eye by the looks of it. So Hagari gets back on the mound. Murray back into the box. Looking in for the sign is Julian Andre. Come set. Kicks, fires, the pitch on the ground to second, could be two. Artiega bobbles it, has a play at first, the throw, it's in time. So unable to turn two, but they get one out on the ground out to Carlos Artiega at second base. I mean, you'll take the out there, of course, but a Taylor made double play ball over there to Carlos. You'd love to see him turn two, certainly capable of it. And now Higuera will have to work with runners on second and third, one out here. Yeah, one out. You got uh, Brendan Keyes, the catcher, stepping up to the plate and two prior at-bats. He's grounded out to Higuera on the mound and flown out to Byron out in right field. Take away a bright spot from this, Dylan. It's that you're not in an overly part, overly dangerous part of the order right now for Guelph, so try to get out of it while you can. Yeah, it is the bottom of the order, eight hitter now in Keyes. Higuera looks in, gets the sign he wants, comes set. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss by Keyes. 0-1 on the off speed early on it. Strike one. Majors up 6-2 in the top of the sixth inning. Higuera comes set. The pitch. Low and away. Count is 1-1. One and one. Not Didn't get far enough away from Ambrose for any runner, runners to move up. Seen in the later part of this inning, later part of this game, specifically Higuera go to the off speed a fair amount of times. He's confident with it, so don't be surprised if he goes with it on some counts you don't normally see off speed in. Yeah, foul ball there 
by Keyes, and the, the off speed has been working, so no reason not to be confident in that off speed. The fastball is still working, and guys, and you usually see guys' uh, off speed pitches start to wear out a little bit as we get deeper and deeper into ball games, but Higuera's uh, off speed stuff has been working well so far. One ball, two strikes to Brendan Keyes, the catcher for this Guelph Royals ball club. Higuera comes set looking to finish him off. The one, two. Line drive into the Majors' dugout. Dodging it is someone down near the tunnel. Count will remain one and two, and we'll try this again. Now interesting, Dylan, to see if they go once more to the off-speed or try to blow the fastball by him. We haven't really seen a whole lot of the strikeouts from Higuera with just a blown-by fastball. Yeah, it's mostly been that nasty off-speed. The one-two called strike three. The tenth strikeout of the ball game for Juliandre Higuera. And when that fastball has resulted in a strikeout, it's been mostly strikeouts looking on the corners. Another strikeout there and goes right back to that fastball. Catches the corner, called strike three. And we've seen him get a few called strikes on those fastballs. And oh boy, does he look good tonight. Well, Andre Aguera has been dominant in his performance tonight. Very, very good to see from him. And he's kept the majors in the ballgame, limiting the run total for Guelph to two here through five and two-thirds innings. He's got Ethan Moen at the plate. He's got two strikeouts against Moen here tonight. And you'd love to try and get out of this inning before you turn the lineup over. We've mentioned it a few times, and super important to try and get through here before the top of the lineup dangerous part gets there. And that one's popped up. Ambrose and Higuera converging chambers. Higuera in foul territory can't make the play. That ball is going to drop. And you know what? Tough play for Higuera to make. The catcher and the first baseman need to take charge on that. A tough play to make, and really a ball that you want to see your pitcher stay away from there. Ideally, Mike Ambrose try to take control of that or even Chambers come over and make that grab there as they're coming in. It's a little bit easier of a ball for them to get to and make the grab. Yeah, tough play there to make for the pitcher who's got to come off the mound, run all the way into foul territory, and that one just dropped. Higuera looks in. Moen at the plate, comes set. Does Higuera, here's the pitch. That's in the dirt, and it's... About a 55-foot pitch there is good block by Mike Ambrose. One and one the count. Two Moen. Two outs. Majors up six to two. Out hitting the Royals 10-7. Guelph has two errors. Majors have one. Still in a good situation to get yourself out of the inning, though. We'll see if he goes back to that fastball. Here's the 1-1, one, one, off speed, called strike two from Higuera. One and two, he's a strike away from putting away yet another batter. And a big pitch coming here for Higuera. The 1-2, Higuera comes set. Steps off, big pitch coming up. So Higuera steps, up, steps off the rubber, gathers his thoughts, steps back on, looks into the sign from Mike Ambrose. One and two is the count. The pitch. On the ground, past Artiega. Byron's going to come up throwing. Runner's being waved to the plate. Here's the throw. It's up the line, and being held at third is the runner there. So a strong throw from Byron keeps the runner at third base. That is going to be an unearned run for Julian Higuera as uh, the runner who just scored, Jeff McLeod, got on with the error to uh, Chris Chambers. Unfortunate to see a hit there, but a strong throw from Byron keeps them from scoring another one. Just one will come across here and move it to a 6-3 ball game. Yeah, good to see just one run come in there if you're the majors, and that'll bring up Kyle Cush, the shortstop for this Royals ball club. Higuera's first pitch to Cush. That's just going to miss low. Count is 1-0 now. And if you're Higuera, sure, they've scored a run this inning, but you're still pitching well. One pitch can get you out of here, so just try to get yourself a ground ball to one of the infielders and get yourself back on the bats. Pitch fouled off by Cush. 1-1 one and one now, and they are just trying to get back on the bats here. Are the majors, Noah? Yeah. 
Six to three in the sixth inning. Higuera comes set. One and one is the count. Here's the pitch to Cush. That's a just that's just gonna miss high on the breaking ball there. Two and one. Action of the Majors bullpen. Looks like Aiden Hannon warming up out there. Hannon, we've seen him start ball games, but mainly used her as a reliever so far. 2 1, fouled off in Hannon's direction. That's going to land in the bleachers out in left field. Count is now 2 and 2. Higuera's got a great shot here to put another batter away. Gathers, gathers his thoughts a little bit. Big pitch coming up. Cush at the plate, the shortstop. Runners at second and third, both in scoring position. Higuera comes set, the 2 2. In the air, center field. DeForest. There, and six complete for Juliandre Higuera. Three runs allowed, two of them earned, 10 strikeouts on the ledger for him. We've played five and a half from Labatt Park. Majors lead at six to three. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Majors Baseball on Majors TV. The Majors are up six to three in the bottom of the sixth inning. Yomar Concepcion still out there for his sixth inning of work. He's allowed six runs through five, and. Leading off the inning for the Majors is Jonathan DeForest before the lineup turns over. And we have the top of the order for the Majors in Phil Therapis. JD has been involved in some of the rallies for the Majors tonight, so you'd like to see him get one started here in the bottom of the sixth. For sure. DeForest, a good rally starter. Here's the pitch from Concepcion. Gets the outside corner. It's going to be a called strike one to start the at-bat for JD. Concepcion looks in, comes set. Here's the pitch. Low. One ball, one strike. Now, Dylan, are you a little bit surprised to see Concepcion back out there on the mound? Going into the bottom of the sixth now? A little bit surprised. He's allowed six runs through five innings. I'm a little bit surprised, Noah, to see him back out there on the ground. Strong throw. A very hard throw over there at third base by David Mendham and uh, the retired JD on the little chopper there. Held nothing back on that ball from third to first. Coming across harder than it got to him and first out of the inning. Absolute laser from third base. Phil Thrappa steps up to the plate. He's got a single in the ball game and an RBI. Thrappas looks out. Concepcion looks in. He's got his sign. Here's the first pitch. That's just going to miss up and away. Count is 1-0. and Concepcion looks in, gets the sign. Here's the pitch to Therapis. Squares around a bunt, takes a called strike one. Count is 1-1 one one now. One and one count here. See if Concepcion comes right at Thrapis. Interesting to see what he comes with here. One ball, one strike. Here's the pitch. Missing the inside corner is Concepcion. Two and one now to fill. Thrapis is ready. Concepcion is as well. Here's the pitch. Line drive back at the screen. Count is now two and two. Therapis one for three in the ballgame. Two pop outs to the shortstop to go along with an RBI single as mentioned. Concepcion has his 2-2 ready to go. Here's the pitch. That's going to miss away. Count is now three and two to fill. So another full count to Phil. We'll see if they elect to go right at him here and give him a fastball or try to get him swinging on the off speed. Interesting to see what Concepcion comes with on the 3-2 count. Here's the pitch. Line right back at the screen again. Count will remain 3-2. and two. We'll do it over. Here's a 3-2 from Concepcion. Line back at the screen once again. So Therapis in the midst of a good battle here against Yomar Concepcion. 
So there is action in the Guelph bullpen. Concepcion nearing the end of his line. He is getting tired through five and a third innings of work. The full count offering. Therapis takes a called strike three for the second out. So two away here in the bottom of the sixth inning, and that'll bring up Carlos Artiega. So now we get to see Carlos come to bat here with a chance to try and get stuff going with two outs. No stranger to trying to start the rally here. Watch out for his speed on the bases. He's used that speed to his advantage, two singles, and he's come around to score both times on the single, plus a fly out to right field, Artiega. Steps into the box. Concepcion looks in for the sign. I'd, I'd have to assume that this is going to be Concepcion's last inning, Noah. I would agree as well with the action in the bullpen. Probably going to be his last, but if he gets out of here quick, we might see him go to the seventh. It will be interesting to see as that pitch misses inside, even though Artiega squared around a bunt. Count is 1-0. Pitch from Concepcion on the ground to third. If it stays fair, it could be extra bases, but it's going to get just foul. And the Majors bench didn't like the call. It looked fair from our angle, just barely foul. Umpire is right on the line. He made the call. Artiega slowly walks back to the plate, looking to catch his breath and get ready for a 1 1. Artiega gets the signs from Brent Wales. One ball, one strike, two outs. Here's the pitch. Artiega squares around a bunt, takes high on a breaking ball. Count is two and one. And you know, we talked about with Julian Higuera how the off speed stuff has not disappeared yet. And uh, it's still been sharp. With Concepcion, he's leaving that off speed pitch up, something he cannot do against the bigger power bats like Izzy Pena, Cleveland Brownlee, and Byron Reichstein. The pitch, Artiega checks the swing, and they're saying he did not go around. So the count is now 3-1 and one to Artiega. And a good chance, good hitter's count here for Artiega. He can either try and get a base hit, or even look for that ball four if he can. A good hitter, a good hitter behind you, Nizzi Pena. The 3-1, Artiega takes a called strike two, and he flips the bat away from him. Thought it was ball four. It is going to be a called strike. I'm sure that didn't sit well with Justin Snively. Snively, one of those umpires as well, who does not take too kindly to that kind of stuff. So Carlos has to be careful now, protecting, especially here on this 3-2, on anything on the corners. Yes, anything on the corners. Snively's already been generous with those corners, but after that last pitch, he might be a little more generous to Concepcion. The 3-2 pitch, Artiega takes a called strike three, and as expected, Justin Snively calls him out. Artiega shakes the hand of Concepcion. Justin Snively getting a nice shower of booze from Little Bat Park. Majors faithful. We head to the seventh. Majors lead it by three, six to three. Welcome back to Majors Baseball on Majors TV. Top of the seventh inning, Majors are up by three, and there are a few other ball games going on in the IBL. Noah. Yeah, look at the out-of-town scoreboard now in the IBL. Toronto down 8-3 to three to Hamilton. That is in the seventh inning at our last check. Brantford down 5 nothing to Kitchener in the fifth over at Brantford. And then in the MLB, Jays down 7-1 in the eighth to Arizona. Detroit down 5-3 to Minnesota in the eighth. And now we get to see our first action and scoreboard update from the NBA. The Raptors down 31 to 27 in the second quarter to Golden State. Dylan, back to the majors. Majors are up six to three. Dave Mendham steps up to the plate to lead off the seventh against Juliandre Higuera, who is entering his seventh inning of work. Raptors have the ability to come back. Hopefully they will as they trail Golden State by four. Thanks for keeping us up to date, Noah. Higuera looks in, gets his sign, ready to go. Here's the pitch. That's a called strike one from Julio Andre, and that is going to be 0-1 now to David Mendham. Mendham, we've seen him on base a few times already today, looking to try and start the rally here as well for Guelph. Yeah, Mendham, two singles in the ballgame on the ground, right back to Higgy on the mound. 
Lobs it over to first base and a nice play made over there by Chris Chambers. One away. And Higuera, a good fielding pitcher on the mound there. No exceptions on that play. Kind of just stick out the glove though, Dylan, and found the ball in it. He'll get the first out of the inning. Yeah, look what he found. He found a ball and he lobbed it over to first base. Nice play there for Higuera and that'll bring up Sean Riley. Got a few boos, a little surprising for Sean. Not a hated player, very good bat for Guelph, of course. Riley digs in. Higuera looks in. Here's the first pitch. Popped foul right back towards us. 0-1 is the count. And correct me if I'm wrong here on this stat, Dylan, but I think in the times throughout the ball game that we've seen Sean Riley hit. Majority of them, if not all, have been with the bases empty, which is exactly how you want to be facing Sean Riley. Yes, for sure. Sean Riley's such a good hitter, and he flies that one to center field. DeForest is under it. He makes the catch. Two away, and as you mentioned, Noah, with the bases empty most of the time, that is exactly how you want to attack and face Sean Riley because he is such a good bat, such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. You want to keep guys off the bases, when he's at the plate, and uh, Higuera has done a good job of doing that so far. I'll bring up Angel Villalona, of course, the other slugger in this order for the Guelph Royals. So much like Sean Riley, you want to be facing him when the bases are empty. And for the most part, again, they've done a pretty good job at that tonight. They most certainly have. Here's the first pitch to Villalona. That's going to miss high. Count is now 1-0 from Higuera. Higuera gets ready. Here is the 1-0. Outside, 2-0. Higuera falls behind 2-0, but we've seen him come back from that many times in the ballgame already. He's been very good at working his way back into counts so far in this one. He comes set. He's ready with his 2-0, the pitch. Swing and a miss, 2-1, and one. a big cut there from Angel Villalona. He was looking to go deep on that one, and he missed it. Count is 2-1. and one. And now Aiden Haney continues to warm up in the Majors bullpen down that left field line. Wouldn't be surprised, though, if Higuera keeps going, if he... Keeps at the rate he's at, Dylan. Yes, he's been very good so far, and he's had a quick seventh inning to date, and that is a swing and a miss, a foul tip. Good job by Mike Ambrose holding on to it. Count is now 2-2. Two and two. Higuera looks in. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, seventh inning. The pitch. That is just going to miss. Full count now from Higuera with two outs. See what he comes at. Three and two. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Higuera comes set. Here's the pitch. Violona swings and misses. Strike three. 11 strikeouts for Julian Andre Higuera through seven innings. Talk about a great performance on the mound from the major starting pitcher. Stretch time here at Labatt Park. To the bottom of the seventh we go. Majors are up by three. Welcome back to Majors Baseball on Majors TV. Bottom of the seventh inning, we have a new arm out there for the Guelph Royals as Yomar Concepcion's night is over. He pitched six good innings for the Royals. Uh, that brings in Evan Kaiser, a reliever for Guelph. Yeah, Dylan, we get to see a new arm on the mound, Concepcion. A good start for him, though. You, you really can't say that he had a bad start on the mound. Sure, he gave up six, but some good, strong innings for him and gives way to Evan Kaiser on the mound, pitch for the Barry Baycats last year and Guelph this year. 0-2 record so far in the summer of 2019 in three games for him. Yeah, he'll look to turn things around here, hopefully uh, keep the majors scoreless. Uh, interesting to see how the majors adapt to the new arm. They got the heart of the order coming up. Brownlee, or sorry, Izzy Pena, Cleveland Brownlee and Byron Reichstein coming up for the majors, so no easy tasks out of the pen. And for the majors, sure, you got that 
Six to three lead right now, but with the heart of the order up, you'd love to try and push across a few more runs here. Here's the first pitch to Izzy Pena. That is going to miss. One ball, no strikes. Pena looks out. Kaiser looks in. The 1-0. Misses high. Count is now 2-0 to Izzy Pena. Pena so far in the ball game. A base hit earlier on that scored a run. The 2-0 home. Pena drives that one to left center field. Right there to make the play is Murray. One away now. And that'll bring up Cleveland Brownlee. Good piece of hitting there by Pena to take it the other way. Unfortunately, right at the left fielder. That will bring up Cleveland here. One out in the inning. Cleveland so far in the ball game is lined out to center field. Grounded into a fielder's choice and singled in three at-bats as he gets set for this A-B here. Nobody on, one out. Good time here for Cleveland to try to find the ball in the gap, kickstart a rally. For sure, here's the first pitch from Kaiser to Cleveland. Checks his swing on a breaking ball, didn't go around, pitch missed inside. Count is 1-0. Oh. Geyser looks in, gets the sign, here's the pitch. Swing and a miss, one ball, one strike. Pitchers tonight and all season long, Dylan, seem to be having success against Cleveland with the off-speed pitch, especially at outer part of the zone. Yeah, for sure, and that seems to be the game plan for a lot of these pitchers against Cleveland, especially with Guelph. The pitch, Cleveland hits that off-speed pitch right between the third baseman and shortstop. So Cleveland gets on base with one away, and the Majors have a base runner. The difference with that one is it caught a little bit too much of the plate. When you keep the off-speed pitch outside, Cleveland has a tendency to reach, but when you leave it over the plate there, he can hit the ball. Oh, he most certainly can. If there's anyone that can hit it in this lineup, it is Cleveland. And he took that off-speed pitch into left field for a single. So the Majors have a runner at first. Byron at the plate. Looks like we're going to have a pinch runner in the ball game. Spencer Bach comes in to pinch run for Cleveland Brownlee as his night is complete. So it will be the pinch runner in for Cleveland. Major is looking for some insurances that will end his night. Bach has a little bit of speed on the bases though, so look for Majors to possibly put him in motion here. Interesting to see what he does. Byron at the plate, one out. Majors want even more insurance than just the three runs. So Cleveland's side is complete. Bach is out at first base. The pitch low. Count is now 1-0. Byron in the ball game, one for three, a strikeout, a pop out, and a single. Here's the 1-0, that's low. Count is now 2-0 to Byron. Coming set is Kaiser on the mound, the 2-0. Byron takes low again, 3-0, doesn't get far enough away from Keyes behind the plate for Bach to advance. Three balls, no strikes, Bach at first base, one out. Interesting to see if Byron, even, even with all of his power, if Byron has the take sign on 3-0. Might have the red light, so we're going to have to wait and see. Although I imagine they're going to let him swing on 3-0. Here's the 3-0, that's going to be a called strike one. Might have had the red light there, might have thought it was outside. Count is now 3-1. and one. The first three pitches did not uh, come too close to the zone, so could have easily been the red light there. Byron looks out. Kaiser comes set. Kicks, fires. Byron on the ground to second base. Play is made over there. Throw to first. Two away, but Spencer Bach moves up to second. And that's a play that, you know, it's, it's hit softly and a high bouncer. 
You're not going to turn two a lot of times on that. However, if Cleveland Brownlee doesn't get pinch run for, you might have a chance at two, as he doesn't run as well as Bach does out there. So the pinch run pays off a little bit in terms of keeping the inning alive, at least at this point. And Chris Chambers will get another chance to swing the bat here in the bottom of the seventh. Yeah, Chris Chambers gets another shot at things. He's grounded out, popped out, and struck out in three at-bats in his major's return. Bach is a lot faster than Cleveland, and he uh, could have been the, uh, the difference maker there in avoiding the double play. Chambers looks out. Kaiser looks in for the sign. Izzy Pena up in the major's bullpen now. Here's the pitch from Kaiser. Low. One ball, no strikes. Chambers at the dish. The 1-0. Chambers fouls that one off the catcher, it looks like. One ball, one strike now. Two outs here in the seventh inning. Now with a little bit of the speed upgrade out there for Cleveland, the pinch runner, Spencer Bach, does run a little bit better. So even a ball that's hard hit to an outfielder has a chance of scoring him. It most certainly does. Kaiser's 1-1. One, one. Chambers takes inside. Two balls and one strike now. Two balls, one strike to Chambers. Kaiser comes set. The break at the buckle on the offering. Swing and a miss. Two balls, two strikes. Two outs here in the bottom of the seventh. Here's the 2-2. Chambers swings and misses. Strike three. The tag is applied, and the inning is over. Seven complete played from Labatt Park. Majors are up 6-3. Noah Smith with the call when we come back. Welcome back here to Labatt Park. We are set to start things here in the eighth inning now from Labatt as the Majors out in front 6-3 still. That one popped up foul territory. Chambers' chance to catch it. And he will. He'll make the grab. So a quick first out here on the mound. On the mound is still Julian Higuera. He's in his eighth inning of work for the majors. An absolute workhorse. 11 strikeouts through seven and a third innings. Why not leave him out there if he's dominating the way he is? And with that, Dylan, the first out here will bring up the next batter, Matt Polarchuk, the second baseman for Guelph. Six to three here. The year gets set on the first pitch. Swings through and misses that one. Strike one to get ahead. Top of the eighth inning, and Julian Triaguerra is still getting swings and misses. That tells you how good he has been tonight. Here's the pitch from Higuera inside. So one and one now, the count on Higuera. On Polarczyk, pardon me, Higuera working well so far in the ballgame, as mentioned, now working into the eighth inning. An absolute workhorse out there on the mound. That pitch missed inside, but did you see how hard that pitch was thrown? Very good pitch there from Higuera. Goes off speed, a little softer on that one. Count moves to one and two now, and another strikeout opportunity. Count him up for Higuera. Here's the one-two in the dirt, so it will go to 2-2 two, two now. And it looks like Mike Ambrose might be feeling that one a little bit, so Higgy will walk back out to the mound. A little bit of a conference on the mound now between Higuera and Ambrose. They do have him in a 1-2 count still. Home plate umpire Justin Snively wipes off the plate there, and we're just set to get back here to the 1 2 count. Find some time for major catcher Mike Ambrose, who got hit by that uh, last pitch. Swung on and missed. Another strikeout in the ballgame for Higuera. 12th of the game, and the second out here of the eighth. 
You know, I don't. I haven't memorized these stats, but uh, I believe Higuero was down by six in the strikeout race for most strikeouts in the IBL. It's safe to say he's taken that lead in this absolutely dominant performance. A dozen now in the ball game and two outs here in the eighth inning. Here is the pitch from Higuera. A bit low for a ball to start the at bat. That one hit on the ground past the diving chambers. They're going to say it's a fair ball. So it gets into right field. And it will be a two out double past the diving Chris Chambers. Yeah, no, you sounded a little bit surprised when they called it fair, and I did too. I didn't say anything, but it did look foul from our angle up here. Apparently it was a fair ball, however, and now the Royals have a runner at second. But uh, no movement whatsoever from the Majors dugout. They're going to let Higuera try to finish this inning off, and with his, uh, his ability to stay calm out there, why not? Mike Ambrose behind the dish threw up his hands as well, certainly thinking that that ball was foul. Nonetheless, Aguirre will have to work with a runner on second, two outs still in the inning, bottom of the order. That one hit on the ground. Crows boots it a little bit, and it will be an error there, allowing the runner to reach. Tough play there for Steve Froze. He uh, had a short hop, and... Unfortunately, booted that ball a little bit, so the runner will reach. Getting to third is Ricky Murray. And uh, Ethan Moen steps up to the plate. The number nine hitter in the order for Guelph will try to extend the inning score run here if he can. There were two outs in the inning for Higuera and then a double that looked foul down the line. And an error to Froze at third. Puts runners at the corners, two out. Two men out. Aguera looking in. Moen certainly taking his time at the plate, getting settled in there. First pitch to Moen. Here's the delivery from Higuera. That one hit on the ground. Right back to him. He'll get the throw over in time. And the inning will be over. Another scoreless inning for Higuera on the mound. And we will go to the bottom of the eighth. Majors looking for some insurance. Six to three, the Majors lead here at Labatt Park. Welcome back to Labatt Park Majors TV coverage of London Majors Baseball. Dylan will take a quick look at the out-of-town scoreboard now around the end. IBL, MLB, and, of course, the Raptors in the NBA. Well, here the Majors are up 6-3 to three in Hamilton. The Cardinals, they lead the Maple Leafs 9-4 to four out in Brantford at Arnold Anderson Stadium. Kitchener is up 7-2 to two in the MLB. The Diamondbacks and Blue Jays have completed their game. It is 8-2 Arizona, a final there in the top of the 8th inning. Or, sorry, ninth inning. It is 5-3 Minnesota over Detroit. And at halftime in the NBA Finals, the Raptors trail the Warriors 46-42 as they are heading into the second half out at Oracle. And that'll bring up Mike Ambrose to start things for us in the bottom of the eighth inning. As mentioned at the top of that out-of-town scoreboard, we're here at Labatt Park, 6-3 majors, bottom of the eighth inning. An impressive performance on the mound for Higuera. Kaiser back on the mound for Guelph to face Ambrose. First pitch outside for a ball. 1-0. Very impressive performance for Julio Andre Higuera out there on the mound. Looks like his evening is complete. Two arms uh, getting warm in that Majors bullpen. It's the pitch count getting up there that I would imagine will be the reason for the departure of Higuera, although he's been throwing well so far. That pitch called a strike on the 2-0, moves it to 2-1. Ambrose drives that one into the right center field gap. It's going to be caught out there 
in center by Moen in the first out of the bottom of the eighth inning. Comes the way of a flyout. A good, uh, a good contact there for Mike Ambrose, driving it into right center field. Hung up a little bit too long, though, as uh, then Moen was able to get to that ball in the right center field gap. Brings up Steve Froze. So Steve Froze will bat here, one out in the bottom of the eighth inning. Try to start a little rally here to get some insurance runs across. Off speed, first pitch, call to strike, 0-1. Froze in three prior at-bats. He's singled, struck out, and grounded out. That one across for a strike as well on Froze. And Dylan down there in the Majors bullpen, Izzy Pena. The man can do absolutely everything, can't he, Izzy Pena? In that pen warming up for the Majors, possibly coming in to attempt to close this one out. That one up high. One and two now on Froze. As mentioned, we saw Aiden Hannon warming up earlier in the game. Now Pena down there warming up. Here is the 1-2. Fouled off by Froze. We'll have to redo the 1-2. Off speed, misses high, slips out of his hand. A 2-2 pitch coming here from Kaiser on the mound. A few boos in the crowd. The foul ball was taken by an adult, not given to any kids. Fouled off into the screen in front of us. Good battle by Froze. We've seen him have a few good at-bats tonight, Dylan, where he's fouled off some two-strike pitches. That's much of the same here. Yeah, for sure. See, Froze does a great job battling with two strikes. Swings and misses at that one, though. It's a strikeout here for the second out of the bottom of the eighth. And it will... Bring up Jonathan DeForest. Two outs, bottom of the eighth inning. So DeForest a bat now for the majors. Takes the first one for a strike. Coming into this game, DeForest 229 batting average with that double he had earlier he might have improved that one and one after that one misses certainly looks like he'll improve it with a hit there and he's looking for another one here I'll be with two outs in the eight upstairs ball two two and one now The 2-1 to DeForest. Popped up. Foul territory, but we'll get out of play. Evens the count at 2-2. Two two. Interesting to see what Kaiser comes with here on 2-2. Two and two. Time call that to play here, but Kaiser will grab his sign once more. Keys gives him his sign. Leg kick. Delivered. Called strike three on the off-speed pitch. DeForest thought it was up and out. It's a called strike three nonetheless. And we will go to the ninth here from Labatt. The Majors look to close it out. They leave. Six to three on Majors TV. Welcome back. Labatt Memorial Park. The site of this one. Top of the ninth inning. Dylan and... Dylan, who is that back out there on the mound for the Majors? Well, Noah, that is the starting pitcher, Juliandre Higuera, with uh, 120 pitches through eight innings. So he looks to finish this one off. First pitch of the ninth, fouled off for strike one. Getting ahead is Higuera. And what, just a dominant performance for Juliandre Higuera so far in this ball game. O one one from Higuera. Swung on and missed. Count moves to 0-2. Oh 
What a great job he's done so far. Numerous 0-2 counts. He's got another one here looking for his 13th. Here's the 0-2 from Higuera. Just a bit low. Count will move to 1-2. and two. Higuera will look to finish off, finish off Kyle Cush, who has struck out twice in the ballgame. It's 0 for 4 overall on the day. Higuera popped up on the infield. Thrapis makes the grab, and Cush is retired for the first out of the ninth inning. Two outs away is Juliandre Higuera from a complete game. Dave Mendham steps up to the plate, and he's been one of the more successful hitters against Higuera today. Two singles, strikeout, and a ground out. Been on base a number of times, has Mendham. He'll look to get on here. Higuera looked to set him down. First pitch, that one hit on the ground. Throws at third. Going to have to come up with a strong throw. Cross the diamond. Right past Chambers at one. Would have been a close play nonetheless, and Mendham finds himself on base once more. Yeah, tough play for Steve Froze over there at third base. Interesting to see what the ruling will be there. And it will be an error charged to someone down there. It'll be an error charged to Steve Froze at third base on the throw. So now you got Sean Riley at the plate with a runner at first base and one out. Riley, not a whole lot of success tonight for the Royals. Has a base hit. Yes, he does have one, two base hits, two singles, a fly out and a strikeout in the ball game. You'd like to shut him down here. That one. Cross for a strike to start the at-bat to Riley. 0-1 as Higuera gets ahead. Ninth inning, Juliandre Higuera is above 120 pitches, and he's still getting ahead of hitters. With a hard fastball of all things as well. That one. Call the strike again here. And Dylan, he is using the fastball here in the ninth as hard as it has been all night long. Wow. It has not lost any velocity. The breaking stuff has not lost any bite. He has been tremendous today. 0-2 pitch to Sean Riley. That one hit on the ground. Carlos will have to go to one. That's the only out he'll get. Mendham stopped halfway, and it looks like that will put him at second base. So the runner will get to second. There's an argument here from Phil Thrappis that the uh, runner was, veered off the baseline. Uh, there will not be a conference here. There might be. Not sure. Artiega had to stop. He could not tag the runner. He had to go to first with it. Um, but good job by Carlos, not faltering to the runner stopping. He still made the play at first base. Rube Chandler out to talk to the second base umpire. Carlos and made sure he did get at least one out, though, which is a smart play to do. Puts two outs on the board now. And things seem to be getting a little more heated out there between Rupe and the umpire, but it seems that Rupe is slowly walking back to the dugout. Not pleased, but he will walk back there. Higuera will have to face Villalona one more time here with two outs in the top of the ninth inning. They have that 6-3 lead, and he has looked sharp tonight. Majors up by three. Villalona has walked, singled, and struck out twice. Higuera will look to silence one of the better bats in this lineup. Higuero, two outs in the ninth inning. Inside, ball one. Villalona gets out of the way of that one. So a 1-0 count here. You know what, Noah? Juliandre is above 130 pitches. My arm would have fallen off at, 100 and, at, at 90. I don't know how he's still pumping in that fastball that hard. Just outside, 2-0 on Villalona. So he's gone at him all game long. We'll see if he can get at him here. Falls behind 2-0 to start. Mentioned he struck him out the last two times. 
One's looking, one's swinging, and what a way to cap off the ball game if you can get a strikeout here. That one in the air to right center. Byron tracking it down and will make the grab, and the ball game is over. A complete game. Stellar performance for Julio Andre Higuera on the mound. He gives up three over nine. Thirteen strikeouts in the majors come out with a 6-3-1 to three one to start the weekend on Friday evening. Great win. Huge performance by Julio Andre Higuera, who was absolutely dominant on the mound. No one could touch him throughout the ball game. Three runs, two of them earned over nine innings. A complete game for Julio Andre Higuera, and the bullpen completely rested, ready to go in Barry tomorrow. They face a tough task, the pitching staff does, against the Barry Bay Cats. We'll take a quick break. Post-game thoughts when we return here on Majors TV.